Hi dear learners. In this video you'll find the vocabulary corresponding to lot of daily situations. First, each expression is explained. Second, a realistic phrase using this expression is provided. Of course different native accents are used. And as usual, the images of the video will help to memorize and understand. Enjoy. Let's get started. 1. Airplane transport and travel. Airport terminal, the building where passengers check in, go through security, and board their flights. Baggage claim, the area where passengers collect their luggage after landing. Boarding pass, a document that shows your flight number, seat number, and boarding time. You need it to board the plane. Carry-on luggage, the bags that you can take with you on the plane. They have to fit in the overhead compartment or under the seat in front of you. Check-in desk, the place where you show your passport, ticket, and luggage before your flight. You can also check in online or at a self-service kiosk. Customs, the place where you have to declare any goods that you are bringing into or taking out of the country. You may have to pay taxes or duties on some items. Departure lounge, the area where you wait for your flight after passing through security. You can find shops, restaurants, and restrooms there. Duty-free shop a store that sells goods without charging taxes or duties. You can only buy from these shops if you are traveling internationally. Excess baggage, the luggage that exceeds the weight or size limit allowed by the airline. You have to pay extra fees for it. Flight attendant, a person who works on the plane and takes care of the passengers. They serve food and drinks, give safety instructions, and help in case of emergencies. Flight number, a code that identifies your flight. It usually consists of two letters followed by three or four digits. For example, BA-1234. Gate, the door where you board the plane. It is usually shown on your boarding pass and on the screens in the airport. Immigration. The place where you show your passport and visa, if required, when you enter a foreign country. You may have to answer some questions about your trip and fill out a form. In-flight entertainment, the movies, music, games, and other programs that you can watch or listen to on the plane. You can use your own device or the screen on the seat in front of you. Jet lag. The feeling of tiredness and confusion that you may experience after traveling across different time zones. It can affect your sleep, appetite, and mood. Layover, a stop between two flights. You may have to change planes or wait for a few hours before your next flight. Liquids, aerosols, and gels, lags, the substances that are restricted in your carry-on luggage. You can only bring containers of 100 milliliters or less, and they have to fit in a clear plastic bag. Lost and found, the office where you can report or claim any items that you have lost or found in the airport. Metal detector, a device that scans your body for any metal objects. You have to walk through it when you go through security. Overbooked. The situation when the airline has sold more tickets than there are seats on the plane. Some passengers may have to take a later flight or receive compensation. Overhead compartment, the storage space above your seat on the plane. You can put your carry-on luggage there, but you have to be careful when opening and closing it. Passport, a document that proves your identity and nationality. You need it to travel internationally and to go through immigration and customs. Pilot, the person who flies the plane. 
They sit in the cockpit and communicate with the air traffic control and the passengers. Runway, the long and narrow strip of land where planes take off and land. Seatbelt, a strap that you have to fasten around your waist when you are on the plane. It keeps you safe in case of turbulence or emergency. Security, the process that you have to go through before boarding the plane. You have to show your boarding pass and passport, and put your carry-on luggage and personal items on a conveyor belt for scanning. You may also have to remove your shoes, belt, jacket, and any metal objects. Stopover, a break between two flights that lasts longer than 24 hours. You can leave the airport and explore the city where you are stopping. Ticket, a document that shows that you have paid for your flight. It contains your personal information, flight details, and booking reference. You need it to check in and board the plane. Time zone, a region of the world that has the same standard time. There are 24 time zones in the world, and they are usually one hour apart. For example, Paris is in the Central European Time Zone, CET, which is one hour ahead of Greenwich Mean Time, GMT. Transit, the period of time that you spend in an airport when you are traveling to another destination. You do not have to go through immigration or customs, but you may have to go through security again. Travel agent, a person who helps you plan and book your trip. They can find the best deals on flights, hotels, tours, and other services. Travel insurance, a type of insurance that covers you for any unexpected costs or problems that may occur during your trip. It can include medical expenses, lost or stolen luggage, flight cancellations, and more. Trolley, a cart that you can use to carry your luggage in the airport. You can find them near the entrance, the baggage claim, or the check-in desk. You may have to pay a small fee or deposit to use them. Turbulence, the sudden and irregular movement of the plane caused by changes in the air pressure or wind. It can make the plane shake or bounce, but it is not dangerous. You have to stay in your seat and fasten your seatbelt when it happens. Visa a document that allows you to enter a foreign country for a specific purpose and period of time. You may have to apply for it before your trip and show it at the immigration. Some countries do not require a visa for certain travelers or for short stays. Window seat, a seat next to the window on the plane. You can enjoy the view, but you may have to disturb the other passengers if you want to get up. Aisle seat, a seat next to the aisle on the plane. You can easily get up and move around, but you may have to move for the other passengers or the flight attendants. Middle seat, a seat between the window seat and the aisle seat on the plane. You have less space and comfort, but you can talk to both of your neighbors. Boarding, the process of getting on the plane. You have to show your boarding pass and passport at the gate, and then find your seat on the plane. Landing, the process of arriving at your destination. The plane descends and touches the ground, and then taxis to the gate. You have to stay in your seat until the seat belt sign is off, and then collect your carry-on luggage and leave the plane. Takeoff, the process of leaving the airport. The plane accelerates and lifts off the ground, and then climbs to a higher altitude. You have to stay in your seat and fasten your seat belt until the seat belt sign is off. Connecting flight, a flight that you have to take after your first flight to reach your final destination. You have to change planes at a different airport, and you may have to go through security again. Direct flight, a flight that goes from your origin to your destination without any stops or changes of planes. Non-stop flight, 
a flight that goes from your origin to your destination without any stops, but it may change planes at a different airport. Round trip ticket, a ticket that includes both your outbound and inbound flights. You have to return to the same airport that you departed from. One way ticket, a ticket that only includes your outbound flight. You do not have to return to the same airport that you departed from. Economy class, the cheapest and most basic class of service on the plane. You have less space, comfort, and amenities, but you can save money. Business class, a more expensive and comfortable class of service on the plane. You have more space, comfort, and amenities, such as larger seats, better food, and priority boarding. First class, the most expensive and luxurious class of service on the plane. You have the most space, comfort, and amenities, such as private suites, gourmet meals, and personal service. Airfare, the cost of your flight. It may include taxes, fees, and surcharges, depending on the airline and the destination. Baggage allowance, the amount of luggage that you can check in or carry on the plane without paying extra fees. It depends on the airline, the destination, and the class of service. Itinerary, the plan of your trip. It shows your flight details, such as the dates, times, airports, and airlines. You may also include your hotel, car rental, and activities information. 2. The world's population The world's population The world's population is the total number of people living on Earth. According to the United Nations, the world population reached 7.9 billion in 2021 and is expected to grow to 9.7 billion by 2050. Demography is the scientific study of human populations, their size, structure, distribution, and changes over time. Demographers use various methods and sources of data to analyze population trends and patterns. One of the main sources of data for demography is a census, which is an official count of the population in a country or region, usually conducted every 10 years. A census can provide information on the number, age, sex, ethnicity, and location of the population, as well as other social and economic characteristics. To take a census, governments or other agencies usually send questionnaires or interviewers to collect information from households or individuals. Sometimes, a census can also use administrative records or other sources of data to estimate the population size and characteristics. The forecast of the future population size and growth is based on assumptions about the trends of fertility, mortality, and migration. These assumptions are derived from historical data, current observations, and expert opinions. World population growth is the change in the number of people living in the world over a period of time. It is influenced by the balance between births and deaths, and by the movement of people across borders. The population explosion is a term used to describe the rapid increase in the world population in the 20th and 21st centuries, especially after World War II. The population explosion was mainly driven by the decline in mortality rates due to improvements in health, sanitation, and medicine, while fertility rates remained high. Overpopulation is a situation where the number of people exceeds the carrying capacity of the environment, resulting in negative impacts on the quality of life, the availability of resources, and the sustainability of the ecosystem. Overpopulation can cause problems such as poverty, hunger, disease, pollution, deforestation, and climate change. To be overpopulated means to have more people than the environment can support. 
Some countries or regions are considered to be overpopulated because they have high population densities, low levels of development, or limited natural resources. An age pyramid is a graphical representation of the age and sex structure of a population. It shows the proportion of people in different age groups, usually in five-year intervals, and the difference between males and females. An age pyramid can reveal the demographic characteristics and history of a population, such as its stage of development, fertility, mortality, and migration patterns. An age group is a category of people who share the same age or range of ages. For example, children, adolescents, young adults, middle-aged adults, and elderly are common age groups. An age group can have different needs, preferences, behaviors, and opportunities in society. The birth rate is the number of live births per 1,000 people in a population in a given year. It is also known as the crude birth rate or the natality rate. The birth rate is influenced by factors such as the age structure, the fertility rate, the availability and use of contraception, the social and cultural norms, and the economic and political conditions of a population. The fertility rate is the average number of children that a woman would have in her lifetime, assuming that she survives to the end of her reproductive age and that she follows the prevailing age-specific fertility rates. It is also known as the total fertility rate or the replacement level fertility. The fertility rate is affected by the same factors as the birth rate, but it also reflects the changes in the timing and spacing of births. Birth control is the practice of preventing or reducing the likelihood of pregnancy by using various methods or devices. It is also known as contraception or family planning. Birth control can have benefits for the health, education, and empowerment of women, as well as for the population and the environment. To make contraception available to all women means to ensure that every woman has access to safe, effective, affordable, and acceptable methods of birth control, regardless of her age, income, location, or marital status. It also means to provide information, education, and counseling on reproductive health and rights, and to remove any legal, social, or cultural barriers that prevent women from using contraception. The death rate is the number of deaths per 1,000 people in a population in a given year. It is also known as the crude death rate or the mortality rate. The death rate is influenced by factors such as the age structure, the life expectancy, the causes of death, the availability and quality of health care, and the environmental and sanitary conditions of a population. The infant mortality rate is the number of deaths of children under one year of age per 1,000 live births in a population in a given year. It is an indicator of the health and well-being of a population, as it reflects the level of maternal and child health, nutrition, immunization, and access to health services. Life expectancy is the average number of years that a person is expected to live at a given age, based on the mortality rates of a population in a given period. It is also known as the expected lifespan or the mean lifespan. Life expectancy can vary by sex, race, ethnicity, and geographic location, and it can change over time due to improvements or declines in health and living conditions. A densely populated area is an area that has a high concentration of people per unit of land area. It is also known as an area of high population density. A densely populated area can have advantages such as economic development, social diversity, and cultural richness, but it can also have disadvantages such as overcrowding, traffic congestion, pollution, and resource depletion. A sparsely populated area is an area that has a low concentration of people per unit of land area. It is also known as an area of low population density. 
A sparsely populated area can have advantages such as natural beauty, wildlife conservation, and peacefulness, but it can also have disadvantages such as isolation, lack of services, and underdevelopment. To rise by, to increase by, or to grow by 5% means to add 5% to the original value of a quantity. For example, if the world population was 7.9 billion in 2021 and it rose by 5% in 2022, it would be 8.3 billion in 2022. A rise, an increase, or a growth in world population means a change in the number of people living in the world that is positive or upward. For example, the world population rose, increased, or grew by 1.1% 1 .1 from 2020 to 2021. To rise dramatically means to increase by a large amount or at a fast rate. For example, the world population rose dramatically from 2.5 billion in 1950 to 7.9 billion in 2021. To soar, to spiral, or to skyrocket means to rise very high or very quickly. For example, the world population soared, spiraled, or skyrocketed from 1 billion in 1800 to 7.9 billion in 2021. To double means to multiply by two or to become twice as large. For example, the world population doubled from 3 billion in 1960 to 6 billion in 1999. To triple or to treble means to multiply by three or to become three times as large. For example, the world population tripled or trebled from 2.5 billion in 1950 to 7.5 billion in 2017. To increase fourfold means to multiply by four or to become four times as large. For example, the world population increased fourfold from 1.6 billion in 1900 to 6.4 billion in 2004. To peak at 9 billion means to reach the highest point or the maximum value of 9 billion. For example, some projections suggest that the world population will peak at 9 billion around 2070 and then decline. The current trend is the general direction or tendency of a phenomenon in the present time. For example, the current trend of the world population is to grow at a slower rate than in the past, but still to increase in absolute numbers. The reversal of a trend is the change of direction or tendency of a phenomenon from the previous or expected one. For example, the reversal of a trend of the world population would be to decrease instead of increase, or to increase at a faster rate than before. A baby boom is a period of time when there is a significant increase in the number of births in a population, usually due to social or economic factors. For example, the baby boom in the United States occurred after World War II, from 1946 to 1964, when more than 76 million babies were born. The baby boomers are the generation of people who were born during the baby boom period, usually defined as those born between 1946 and 1964. They are also known as the boomers. The baby boomers have had a significant impact on the society, culture, politics, and economy. 3. Sport An athlete is a person who competes in sports. Athletes are typically physically fit and skilled in their chosen sport. They train hard to improve their performance and compete at the highest level. To compete is to try to win against someone or something else. In sports, athletes compete against each other to see who is the best. They may compete in individual events or team events. A contest is a competition between two or more people or teams. Contests can be held in any sport, and they can be formal or informal. An event is a single competition in a sport. Events can be individual or team events, and they can be held at the local, national, 
or international level. Equipment is the gear that athletes use to play their sport. Equipment can include things like balls, rackets, bats, skis, and helmets. Exercise is any physical activity that helps to improve fitness. Exercise can be done for fun, for health, or for competition. Fitness is the state of being physically and mentally healthy. Fitness can be improved through exercise, diet, and a healthy lifestyle. A goal is the object of a contest. In sports, goals can be scored by throwing, kicking, hitting, or catching the ball. A league is a group of teams that compete against each other. Leagues can be organized by region, sport, or skill level. A match is a contest between two teams. Matches are typically played over two or three sets. An official is a person who enforces the rules of a sport. Officials can include referees, umpires, and judges. Overtime is extra time added to a contest to break a tie. Overtime is typically played in two-minute intervals. A performance is how well an athlete or team does in a contest. Performance can be measured by things like points scored, goals scored, or time to complete a task. To play is to engage in a sport or game. People play sports for fun, for exercise, or for competition. Practice is the act of rehearsing or training for a sport. Athletes practice to improve their skills and prepare for competition. A record is the best performance ever recorded in a sport. Records can be set by individuals or teams. Recreation is any activity that is done for enjoyment or relaxation. Sports can be a form of recreation for people of all ages. To retire is to stop playing a sport professionally. Athletes may retire for a variety of reasons, including injury, age, or a desire to pursue other interests. A score is the number of points or goals that a team has scored in a contest. Scores are typically kept by an official or a scoreboard. A sport is a physical activity that is governed by rules and typically involves competition between two or more people or teams. Sports can be played for fun, for exercise, or for competition. Sportsmanship is the practice of fair play and respect for one's opponents. Sportsmanlike athletes play by the rules and show good sportsmanship, even when they lose. A team is a group of people who work together to achieve a common goal. In sports, teams typically consist of two or more players who compete against other teams. A venue is the place where a sport is played. Venues can include stadiums, arenas, courts, or fields. To win is to be victorious in a contest. In sports, the winning team or athlete is the one that scores the most points or goals. A workout is a period of exercise or training. Workouts can be done to improve fitness, prepare for competition. Sports facilities are any buildings, structures, or spaces that are designed for and used for physical activity or sport. This could include things like stadiums, arenas, gyms, swimming pools, and sports fields. A fitness center is a facility where people can exercise and improve their physical fitness. Fitness centers typically have a variety of equipment, such as treadmills, weights, and exercise machines. To keep fit means to maintain a healthy level of physical fitness. This can be done by exercising regularly, eating a healthy diet, and getting enough sleep. To improve one's fitness means to make oneself more physically fit. This can be done by increasing the intensity and duration of one's workouts, or by trying new types of exercise. To age well means to maintain good health and vitality as one gets older. This can be done by adopting healthy habits, such as exercising regularly, eating a healthy diet, 
and getting enough sleep. To keep slim means to maintain a healthy weight. This can be done by eating a balanced diet and exercising regularly. To be keen on sport means to enjoy watching or playing sports. To exercise means to engage in physical activity in order to improve or maintain one's physical fitness. To be sporty means to enjoy participating in sports and to be physically fit. A sports buff is a person who is very knowledgeable about sports and who enjoys watching and playing them. To be obsessed with sport means to be excessively interested in or preoccupied with sports. 4. Food Culinary Pertaining to the practice of cooking or the kitchen. A culinary education involves mastering various cooking techniques and understanding diverse cuisines. Gourmet Relating to high-quality, refined, and often exotic food. The gourmet chef carefully selects the finest ingredients to create a culinary masterpiece. Palate The sense of taste or the range of flavors perceived by an individual. Her sophisticated palate allowed her to discern the subtle nuances of the wine. Mouth-watering Extremely appealing or appetizing, often causing salivation. The aroma of the freshly baked bread was so mouth-watering that it drew people into the bakery. Savor To enjoy and appreciate the full flavor of food. Take a moment to savor the complexity of the spices in this dish. Cuisine A specific style or method of cooking, often associated with a particular culture or region. Italian cuisine is known for its use of fresh ingredients and simple yet flavorful recipes. Delectable Highly enjoyable and pleasing to the taste. The chocolate truffles were absolutely delectable, melting in the mouth with each bite. Mingle To mix or blend different flavors together. Let the herbs and spices mingle to create a harmonious taste in the sauce. Sustainable Capable of being maintained over the long term without harming the environment. The restaurant is committed to using sustainable seafood to support ecological balance. Umami A savory and rich taste, often described as the fifth basic taste alongside sweet, sour, bitter, and salty. The addition of mushrooms enhances the umami flavor in this dish. Crisp Firm and easily breakable, providing a satisfying crunch. The chef recommended baking the cookies a bit longer for a crisp texture on the edges. Zesty Full of flavor, often with a hint of spiciness or tanginess. The zesty salsa added a burst of freshness and heat to the tacos. Simmer To cook slowly over low heat, allowing flavors to meld and intensify. Let the soup simmer for at least an hour to achieve a rich and robust taste. Mouthfeel The tactile sensation or texture of food inside the mouth. The creamy mouthfeel of the ice cream complemented the crunchy bits of chocolate. Infuse To steep or soak ingredients in a liquid to extract flavors, the chef chose to infuse the olive oil with garlic for a subtle yet fragrant taste. Hearty Satisfying and substantial, often associated with robust and filling meals. A hearty stew with root vegetables is perfect for a comforting winter dinner. Crunchy Having a firm, crisp texture that produces a sound when bitten. The salad is best enjoyed when the vegetables are fresh and crunchy. Exquisite Extremely beautiful or, in the context of food, exceptionally delicious and refined. 
the chef's exquisite presentation elevated the dining experience to a new level. Tender. Easy to cut or chew, not tough or stringy. Slow cooking the meat makes it incredibly tender and succulent. Mingle. To mix or blend together, allowing flavors to intermingle. Let the ingredients mingle in the marinade to enhance the overall taste of the grilled chicken. Mouth-watering. Extremely appetizing, causing an intense desire for food. The sight and aroma of the barbecue were so mouth-watering that everyone eagerly lined up for a plate. Sauté. To cook quickly in a small amount of oil over high heat. Sauté the vegetables until they are tender but still retain a bit of crunch. Piquant. Having a strong, spicy, or tangy flavor that stimulates the taste buds. The piquant sauce added a delightful kick to the grilled shrimp. Indulge. To allow oneself the pleasure of enjoying something, often a treat. On special occasions, it's okay to indulge in a rich and decadent dessert. Sizzling. Making a hissing or crackling sound while cooking, often over high heat. The steak was sizzling on the hot grill, creating an enticing aroma that filled the air. Wholesome. Good for one's health, nutritious, and promoting overall well-being. A bowl of vegetable soup is a wholesome choice for a light and nutritious meal. Aromatic Having a strong, pleasant fragrance, often related to herbs and spices. The aromatic blend of herbs and garlic in the sauce added depth to the pasta dish. Scoop To lift or take up with a scooping motion, often referring to serving portions. Use an ice cream scoop to create uniform portions of mashed potatoes. Mild. Not strong or intense in flavor, gentle and subtle. The mild flavor of the cheese allowed the other ingredients in the dish to shine. Gratify. To give pleasure or satisfaction, especially in the context of fulfilling one's appetite. A well-prepared meal can gratify not only the senses but also the soul. Stir-fry To cook quickly in a pan over high heat while stirring constantly. Stir-fry the vegetables for a vibrant and flavorful side dish. Mingle To mix or combine, especially different flavors or ingredients. Allowing the herbs and spices to mingle in the marinade enhances the taste of the grilled chicken. Sour Having a taste like that of vinegar or lemon juice, tangy. The addition of lemon juice provides a pleasant sour note to the refreshing drink. Robust Strong and full-bodied in flavor, often used to describe hearty dishes. The robust flavors of the chili are a result of slow cooking and a blend of spices. Braise To cook slowly in a closed pot with a small amount of liquid, enhancing tenderness. Braising the meat in red wine and broth imparts a deep and savory flavor. Crispy Having a pleasingly firm, crunchy texture, often achieved through cooking methods like frying or baking. The chef recommended a longer baking time for the potatoes to make them perfectly crispy. Exotic Unusual or rare, often from a distant or foreign origin. The restaurant's menu features exotic spices and ingredients from around the world, creating a unique dining experience. Sear to brown the surface of meat quickly over high heat to seal in juices. Sear the steak for a minute on each side to achieve a flavorful crust. Crispness The quality of being pleasantly firm and crunchy. 
the perfect fried chicken is known for its crispness on the outside and juiciness inside. Meld To blend or mix different components together. Allow the flavors to meld by letting the stew simmer for an extended period. Succulent Juicy and tender, often used to describe well-cooked meat or ripe fruits. The grilled pineapple was so succulent that it was the highlight of the barbecue. Divine Extraordinarily delightful or heavenly, often used to describe exceptionally good food. The aroma of the freshly baked bread was absolutely divine. Garnish To decorate or embellish food, often for both visual appeal and added flavor. The chef used fresh herbs to garnish the dish and enhance its presentation. Mouthful An amount of food that can be eaten in one bite or one serving. Each mouthful of the pasta revealed a perfect balance of flavors. Mingle To socialize or mix with others, or, in the context of food, to blend flavors. The dinner party was a great opportunity for guests to mingle and enjoy diverse cuisines. Tangy Having a sharp, distinctive flavor, often associated with acidity. The tangy lemon vinaigrette added a refreshing kick to the salad. Sizzle To make a hissing or crackling sound when cooking, usually over high heat. The vegetables began to sizzle as they hit the hot pan, releasing a tempting aroma. Sustainable Capable of being maintained over the long term without depleting resources. Choosing sustainable seafood options helps protect the health of our oceans. Seasoned Enhanced in flavor by the addition of herbs, spices, or other seasonings. The seasoned fries were sprinkled with a blend of aromatic spices. Mouth-watering Extremely appetizing and enticing, causing a strong desire for food. The chef's specialty, a mouth-watering chocolate fondue, is a favorite among dessert lovers. 5. Shopping Part 1 Bargain a bargain is something that you buy for a lower price than usual or than its real value. For example, she found a great bargain at the flea market, a vintage dress for only 10 euros. Receipt. A receipt is a piece of paper that shows the amount of money that you have paid for something. For example, he asked for a receipt after paying for his groceries. Refund. A refund is an amount of money that is given back to you if you are not satisfied with something that you have bought or if you return it. For example, she got a full refund for the broken toaster that she bought online. Discount A discount is a reduction in the price of something. For example, the store offered a 20% discount on all shoes during the clearance sale. Exchange An exchange is when you give something back to a store and get something else of the same value instead. For example, he exchanged the shirt that he bought for his brother for a different size. Fitting room A fitting room is a small room in a clothing store where you can try on clothes before buying them. For example, she went to the fitting room to see if the jeans fit her well. Cashier. A cashier is a person who works at a store and takes the money from customers when they pay for their purchases. For example, he waited in line to pay the cashier for his books. Cart. A cart is a large metal basket on wheels that you use to carry the things that you want to buy in a supermarket or a large store. For example, she pushed the cart around the store and put the items that she needed in it. Checkout A checkout is the place where you pay for your purchases in a store. For example, 
He scanned the barcode of each item at the checkout and then paid with his credit card. Coupon. A coupon is a piece of paper or a code that gives you a discount on something that you buy. For example, she used a coupon to get 10% off on her pizza order. Gift card. A gift card is a card that has a certain amount of money on it that you can use to buy things at a specific store or group of stores. For example, he gave her a gift card for her birthday so that she could choose what she wanted. Inventory. An inventory is a list of all the things that a store has in stock and their quantities. For example, she checked the inventory to see if they had any more of the perfume that the customer wanted. Label. A label is a piece of paper or fabric that is attached to something and that gives information about it, such as its price, size, brand, or ingredients. For example, he read the label on the bottle to see what the wine was made of. Merchandise. Merchandise is a general term for the goods that are sold in stores. For example, the store had a wide variety of merchandise, from clothes and accessories to electronics and books. Price tag. A price tag is a small piece of paper or plastic that is attached to something, and that shows how much it costs. For example, she looked at the price tag on the dress and decided that it was too expensive for her. Sale. A sale is when something is sold for a lower price than usual for a limited period of time. For example, he bought a new TV during the Black Friday sale and saved a lot of money. Shelf. A shelf is a flat board that is attached to a wall or a piece of furniture and that is used to hold or display things. For example, she arranged the books on the shelf in alphabetical order. Shop assistant. A shop assistant is a person who works in a store and helps customers by giving them information or advice about the products. For example, he asked the shop assistant where he could find the socks. Shopping bag. A shopping bag is a bag that you use to carry the things that you have bought in a store. For example, she put the clothes that she had bought in her shopping bag and left the store. Shopping list. A shopping list is a list of the things that you need or want to buy. For example, he made a shopping list before going to the supermarket so that he would not forget anything. Store. A store is a place where you can buy things. For example, she went to the store to buy some milk and eggs. Window shopping. Window shopping is when you look at the things that are displayed in the windows of stores without buying anything. For example, he enjoyed window shopping and seeing the latest trends in fashion. Brand. A brand is a name or a symbol that identifies a specific product or a company that makes it. For example, she preferred to buy clothes from well-known brands rather than from cheap ones. Budget. A budget is the amount of money that you have or that you plan to spend on something. For example, he had a tight budget and could not afford to buy anything expensive. Cash. Cash is money in the form of coins or bills. For example, she paid with cash because she did not have a credit card. Credit card. A credit card is a small plastic card that you can use to buy things and pay for them later. For example, he used his credit card to book a hotel room online. Debit card. A debit card is a small plastic card that you can use to buy things and pay for them immediately from your bank account. For example, she used her debit card to withdraw some money from the ATM. Online shopping. Online shopping is when you buy things on the internet using a computer or a smartphone. For example, he liked online shopping because it was convenient and he could compare prices easily. Shopping mall. 
A shopping mall is a large building or a group of buildings that has many different stores, restaurants, and other facilities. For example, she went to the shopping mall with her friends and had a lot of fun. Tax. A tax is an amount of money that you have to pay to the government when you buy or sell something. For example, he was surprised by the high tax that he had to pay for his car. Warranty. A warranty is a written promise from a company that they will repair or replace something that you have bought from them if it breaks or does not work properly within a certain period of time. For example, she checked the warranty on her laptop and saw that it was still valid for another year. Wholesale. Wholesale is when you buy or sell large quantities of something at a lower price than usual. For example, he bought the flowers at wholesale and then sold them at his shop for a higher price. Retail. Retail is when you buy or sell small quantities of something at the usual price. For example, she worked in retail and enjoyed helping customers find what they wanted. Consumer. A consumer is a person who buys and uses goods and services. For example, he was a smart consumer and always looked for the best deals and quality. Customer. A customer is a person who buys something from a store or a business. For example, she was a loyal customer and always shopped at the same store. Vendor. A vendor is a person or a company that sells something. For example, he was a vendor and sold ice cream at the park. Supplier. A supplier is a person or a company that provides something that another person or company needs or wants. For example, she was a supplier and delivered fresh fruits and vegetables to the restaurants. Market. A market is a place where people buy and sell things. For example, he went to the market to buy some fish and cheese. Aisle. An aisle is a space between shelves or rows of seats in a store or a building. For example, she walked down the aisle and looked for the cereal that she liked. Rack. A rack is a metal or wooden frame that is used to hold or display things. For example, he hung his coat on the rack and entered the store. Hanger. A hanger is a metal or plastic device that is shaped like a human shoulder and that is used to hang clothes on. For example, she took the dress off the hanger and tried it on. Mannequin. A mannequin is a model of a human body that is used to display clothes in a store or a window. For example, he admired the mannequin that was wearing a suit and a tie. Size. A size is a number or a letter that shows how big or small something is, especially clothes or shoes. For example, she asked the shop assistant what size the shirt was. Color. A color is one of the many types of light that you can see, such as red, blue, green, etc. For example, he chose a blue color for his shirt because it matched his eyes. Quality. Quality is how good or bad something is, especially in terms of its appearance, performance, or durability. For example, she was impressed by the quality of the leather jacket that she bought. Exchange rate. Exchange rate is the value of one currency in relation to another currency. For example, he checked the exchange rate before traveling to Europe and saw that the euro was stronger than the dollar. Delivery. Delivery is the act of bringing something that has been ordered or bought to a person or a place. For example, she chose the express delivery option and received her package the next day. Review. A review is an opinion or a comment about something, such as a product, a service, a book, or a movie that is written or spoken by someone who has tried or experienced it. 
for example, he read the reviews on the website and decided to buy the headphones that had the highest rating. Slogan A slogan is a short and catchy phrase that is used to advertise or promote something, such as a product, a company, or a campaign. For example, she remembered the slogan of the shampoo that she used, because you're worth it. Logo a logo is a symbol or a design that represents a product, a company, or an organization. For example, he recognized the logo of the car that he wanted, a silver star on a blue background. Six, at the office. Vacant, not occupied by anyone or anything empty. Example. There is a vacant office on the third floor that you can use. A commercial. An advertisement that is broadcast on television or radio. Example. The company made a commercial to promote its new product. A board. A group of people who are in charge of managing or directing a company or an organization. Example. The board of directors approved the new strategy for the next year. To dismiss, fire to remove someone from their job, usually because they have done something wrong or are no longer needed. Example, the company dismissed, fired him for stealing money from the cash register. A briefcase, a flat case that is used for carrying documents, papers, or a laptop. Example, he always carries his briefcase with him when he goes to work. To wrap, to cover or enclose something with paper, cloth, or other material. Example. She wrapped the gift with a beautiful ribbon and a card. To load. To put something or someone into a vehicle, a machine, or a device, usually in order to transport or operate it. Example. He loaded the boxes into the truck and drove away. Earnings. The amount of money that someone or something earns or makes in a given period of time. Example. The company reported a 10% increase in its earnings for the last quarter. Expenditures, the amount of money that is spent on something, especially by a government, a company, or an organization. Example, the company has to reduce its expenditures and increase its revenues. Handling the act or process of dealing with or managing something or someone. Example, the company charges a fee for the handling and delivery of the products. A desk. A piece of furniture that has a flat surface and that is used for working, writing, or studying. Example. She has a lot of papers and books on her desk. Retirement. The act or the time of stopping working. Usually because of reaching a certain age or having enough money. Example. He is planning to retire next year and travel around the world. To update. To change or improve something such as information, data, or a system by adding new or more recent details or features. Example, he updated his resume and applied for a new job. A software, a set of programs or instructions that are used to operate a computer or a device. Example, the software is compatible with Windows and Mac operating systems. The guidelines. A set of rules or instructions that are given or followed for a specific purpose or activity. Example. The company has strict guidelines for the dress code and the behavior of the employees. Wage. The amount of money that someone earns or receives for working, usually calculated by hour, day, or week. Example. The minimum wage in France is 10.25 euros per hour. File. A collection of information or data that is stored in a computer or a device under a specific name. Example, he saved the file on his desktop and emailed it to his client. To complete, to finish doing or making something, especially something that has been planned or ordered. Example, she completed her report and sent it to her boss. A receiver, a part of a phone that you hold near your ear and mouth to hear and speak. Example, he picked up the receiver and dialed the number to carry out, to do or complete something, especially something that has been planned or ordered. Example, 
the company carried out a thorough investigation into the incident. Attached, joined or connected to something or someone. Example, please find attached the invoice for your order. Survey, a method of collecting information or opinions from a group of people, usually by asking them questions. Example, the marketing department conducted a survey to find out the customer's satisfaction with the new product. Bid an offer to pay a certain amount of money for something, such as a product, a service, or a contract. Example, the company made a bid of $10 million for the construction project. A leave, a period of time when someone is absent from work or school for a specific reason, such as vacation, illness, or maternity. Example, she took a leave of absence to travel around the world. A skill a specific ability or talent that someone has learned or developed through training, practice, or experience. Example, she has excellent communication skills and can work well with clients. Department, a part of a company or an organization that deals with a specific area of work or activity. Example, she works in the Human Resources Department and is responsible for hiring new staff. In bold, written or printed in a thick and dark type of letters that makes them stand out from the rest of the text. Example, the important words are in bold so that you can easily see them. To process, to perform a series of actions or operations on something, such as data, documents, or materials, in order to change, improve, or complete it. Example, the bank is processing your loan application and will let you know the results soon. A binder, a hard cover that holds loose sheets of paper together. Example, she put all her notes in a binder and labeled it with her name. A draft, a version of something such as a document, a plan, or a design that is not finished and that may be changed. Example, he wrote a draft of his speech and asked his colleague for feedback. Survey, a method of collecting information or opinions from a group of people usually by asking them questions. Example, the marketing department conducted a survey to find out the customer's satisfaction with the new product. Supplies, the things that are needed for a particular purpose or activity, such as food, water, equipment, or materials. Example, the office manager ordered more supplies for the printer and the coffee machine. The stationery, the paper, envelopes, pens, and other items that are used for writing or working in an office. Example, the company provides the stationery for the employees and expects them to use it wisely. A CEO, a chief executive officer, the person who is in charge of managing and directing a company or an organization. Example, the CEO of the company announced his retirement after 20 years of service. Data processing. The act or process of using a computer or a device to change, organize, or analyze data. Example, data processing is an important part of many businesses and industries. A folder, a part of a computer or a device that is used to store files or other folders. Example, he created a new folder and named it Project X. A drawer a part of a desk, a cabinet, or a piece of furniture that slides in and out and that is used for storing things. Example, he keeps his pens and pencils in the top drawer of his desk. A notice, a written or verbal announcement that informs someone of something, such as a resignation, a termination, or a change of address. Example, he gave his boss a two-week notice before quitting his job. A deadline a date or a time by which something must be done or completed. Example, the deadline for the project is next Friday, so we have to work hard to finish it on time. Executive, a person who has an important position in a company or an organization and who makes decisions and manages other people. Example, she is a senior executive in a multinational corporation, an intern, a person who works for a company or an organization for a short period of time, usually without pay or with low pay, in order to gain experience and skills. Example, she is an intern at a law firm and hopes to become a lawyer someday.
The head, the person who is in charge of or who leads a group, a department, a company, or an organization. Example, he is the head of the accounting department and reports directly to the CEO. To forward, to send something such as an email, a letter, or a message to someone else or to a different address. Example, he forwarded the email to his manager and asked for his opinion. Overdue, not done, paid, or returned by the expected or required time, late. Example, the library charges a fine for overdue books. To take on, to accept or agree to do something, such as a task, a challenge, or a responsibility. Example, she took on the project and worked hard to complete it on time. A flyer. A small piece of paper that has information or an advertisement on it and that is given to or left for people to read. Example, he printed some flyers and distributed them around the neighborhood to promote his garage sale. A position, a job or a role that someone has in a company or an organization. Example, she applied for the position of marketing manager and got an interview. To launch. To start or introduce something new, such as a product, a service, or a project. Example, the company launched its new website yesterday and received a lot of positive feedback. Entitled to, having the right to do or have something, usually because of a rule, a law, or an agreement. Example, as an employee, you are entitled to a paid vacation every year. A chart. A visual representation of information or data, such as a graph, a table, or a diagram. Example. The chart shows the sales figures for the last month. To cancel. To stop something from happening or being done, usually by saying that it will not happen or be done. Example. The meeting was canceled due to bad weather. A form. A document that has blank spaces for someone to fill in with information or details, usually for a specific purpose or activity. Example, she filled out the form and signed it at the bottom. An income, the amount of money that someone earns or receives from working, investing, or other sources. Example, her income is enough to support her family and save some for the future. Corporate, relating to a large company or a group of companies. Example, he works in the corporate sector and wears a suit every day. A booklet, a small book that has a few pages and a paper cover, and that gives information about something. Example, the company gave us a booklet that explains the benefits and policies for the employees. To delete, to remove or erase something, especially from a computer or a device. Example, he deleted the email after reading it. Directory, a list of names, addresses, phone numbers, or other information that is arranged in alphabetical order or in categories. Example, you can find the phone number of the company in the directory. Staple, a small piece of metal that is used to fasten sheets of paper together. Example, do you have a stapler and some staples? I need to attach these documents. A takeover bid, an attempt by a company or a group of investors to buy another company by offering to buy its shares. Example, the board of directors rejected the hostile takeover bid from the rival company. The turnover, the amount of money that a business or an organization earns from selling its products or services in a given period of time. Example, the company has increased its turnover by 15% since last year. Assignment, a task or a project that someone is given to do, usually as part of their work or study. Example, he completed his assignment on time and submitted it to his supervisor. Overdue, not done, paid, or returned by the expected or required time, late. Example, the library charges a fine for overdue books. Shipment, a large amount of goods that are sent or delivered from one place to another. Example, the shipment of clothes arrived from China and was stored in the warehouse. To pick up, to collect or receive something or someone from a place. Example, can you pick up the mail from the post office on your way back? Seven City and Urban Life
Affordability. Affordability is the degree to which something is affordable, meaning that its cost is within one's budget or financial means. For example, many people struggle with the affordability of housing in big cities. Diversity. Diversity is the quality or state of having many different forms, types, ideas, or kinds of people or things. For example, the school celebrates diversity by organizing cultural events and activities. Public transportation. Public transportation is the system of buses, trains, subways, and other vehicles that are available for the general public to use, usually for a fee. For example, public transportation is a convenient and eco-friendly way to travel around the city. Socialization. Socialization is the process of learning how to behave in a way that is acceptable to society or a specific group. For example, children learn socialization skills from their parents, teachers, and peers. Cost of living. Cost of living is the amount of money that is needed to pay for the basic expenses of living, such as food, housing, taxes, and utilities. For example, the cost of living in New York is much higher than in Omaha. Crime. Crime is an act that breaks the law and is punishable by the authorities. For example, the police are investigating a series of crimes in the neighborhood. Pollution. Pollution is the contamination of the environment by harmful substances or waste. For example, air pollution can cause respiratory problems and diseases. Stress. Stress is a state of mental or emotional strain or tension that results from difficult or demanding situations. For example, he felt a lot of stress at work and decided to take a vacation. Loneliness. Loneliness is the feeling of being sad or unhappy because one has no friends or companionship. For example, she felt lonely after moving to a new city where she knew no one. Urbanization. Urbanization is the process of making an area more urban, meaning more populated, developed, and industrialized. For example, urbanization has led to the growth of megacities and urban sprawl. Urban sprawl. Urban sprawl is the expansion of urban areas into the surrounding countryside, often resulting in the loss of natural habitats and farmland. For example, Urban sprawl is a major environmental and social problem that needs to be addressed. Gentrification. Gentrification is the process of renovating and improving a deteriorated urban area, often making it more attractive and expensive for the upper class. For example, gentrification can cause displacement and inequality for the original residents of the area. Segregation. Segregation is the separation or isolation of people or groups based on race, ethnicity, religion, or other factors. For example, segregation was a common practice in the United States until the civil rights movement of the 1960s. Inequality. Inequality is the condition of being unequal or unfair, especially in terms of rights, opportunities, wealth, or status. For example, Inequality is a global issue that affects millions of people. Accessibility. Accessibility is the quality or state of being easily reached, entered, used, or understood by people with disabilities or special needs. For example, the building has ramps and elevators to ensure accessibility for wheelchair users. Amenities. Amenities are features or facilities that provide comfort, convenience, or enjoyment. For example, the hotel offers many amenities such as a pool, a gym, and a spa. Diversity of thought. Diversity of thought is the variety of perspectives, opinions, ideas, or beliefs that people have or express. For example, diversity of thought can foster creativity and innovation in a team or organization. Innovation. Innovation is the act or process of introducing new or improved products, services, methods, or ideas. For example, the company is known for its innovation and cutting-edge technology. Social mobility. Social mobility is the ability or opportunity for people to move up or down the social ladder, changing their social class or status. For example, 
Education is a key factor for social mobility and economic development. Anime, anime is a state of normlessness, meaning the lack of social norms, values, or standards. For example, anime can result from rapid social change, social disintegration, or alienation. Crime, crime is an act that breaks the law and is punishable by the authorities. For example, the police are investigating a series of crimes in the neighborhood. Environmental impact. Environmental impact is the effect or influence that an action, activity, or project has on the environment, such as the natural resources, ecosystems, or climate. For example, the environmental impact of the construction project was assessed and minimized. Isolation. Isolation is the state of being separated or apart from others, either physically or emotionally. For example, he felt a sense of isolation after losing his job and his friends. Lack of open space. Lack of open space is the shortage or absence of natural or public areas that are not built upon, such as parks, gardens, or fields. For example, lack of open space can affect the quality of life and health of urban residents. Metropolis. Metropolis is a large and important city that is the center of a specific region or activity. For example, Paris is a metropolis of culture, fashion, and art. Megacity. Megacity is a very large city that has a population of more than 10 million people. For example, Tokyo is the largest megacity in the world with over 37 million people. Megalopolis. Megalopolis is a region or area that consists of several large cities and their suburbs that are closely linked by transportation, communication, or economic activity. For example, the Northeast Megalopolis of the United States includes cities such as New York, Boston, Philadelphia, and Washington, D.C. Shantytown. Shantytown is a poor and crowded area of a city where the houses are made of cheap or improvised materials such as cardboard, metal, or wood. For example, many people live in shanty towns in developing countries, lacking basic services and infrastructure. Housing segregation. Housing segregation is the separation or division of people or groups in terms of where they live, based on race, ethnicity, income, or other factors. For example, Housing segregation can create spatial inequality and social exclusion. Mall. Mall is a large building or complex that contains many shops, stores, or businesses, usually with a common parking area. For example, she went to the mall to buy some clothes and shoes. Library. Library is a place where books, magazines, newspapers, or other materials are available for people to read, borrow, or study. For example, he likes to go to the library to do his homework and research. Subway. Subway is a system of underground trains that run in a city, transporting passengers from one station to another. For example, she takes the subway every day to get to work. Sidewalk. Sidewalk is a path or walkway along the side of a street or road intended for pedestrians. For example, he walked on the sidewalk and avoided the busy traffic. Crosswalk. Crosswalk is a marked area on a street or road where pedestrians can cross safely. For example, she waited for the green light and then crossed the crosswalk. Traffic. Traffic is the movement of vehicles, people, or animals along a street, road, or highway. For example, he was stuck in traffic for an hour and missed his appointment. Suburb. Suburb is a residential area that is located outside of a city or town usually with lower population density and more green space. For example, they move to the suburb to enjoy a quieter and more spacious lifestyle. Downtown. Downtown is the central or main area of a city or town, usually with more business, entertainment, and cultural activities. For example, he works downtown and takes the subway every morning. Skyscraper. Skyscraper is a very tall building that has many floors and windows, usually located in a city. For example, the skyscraper offers a panoramic view of the city skyline. Cosmopolitanism. Cosmopolitanism is the quality or state of being cosmopolitan, 
meaning worldly, sophisticated, or open to different cultures and ideas. For example, she loves the cosmopolitanism of the city and its diverse people and cuisines. Livability. Livability is the quality or state of being livable, meaning suitable or pleasant for living. For example, the city ranks high in livability due to its safety, cleanliness, and amenities. Sustainability. Sustainability is the quality or state of being sustainable, meaning able to be maintained or continued without harming the environment or depleting the resources. For example, the project aims to promote sustainability and reduce the carbon footprint. Noise pollution. Noise pollution is the excessive or harmful noise that disturbs the peace or health of people or animals. For example, noise pollution can cause stress, hearing loss, and sleep problems. Air pollution. Air pollution is the presence or introduction of harmful substances or particles in the air that affect the quality or health of the atmosphere. For example, air pollution can cause respiratory problems and diseases. Urban planning. Urban planning is the process or activity of designing and organizing the physical and social aspects of a city or town, such as the buildings, roads. Eight, at the hotel, adjoining rooms, two hotel rooms with a door in the center. If you wish, we can book an adjoining room for your parents. Amenities, local facilities such as stores and restaurants. We are located downtown, so we are close to all the amenities. Attractions, things to see and do for tourists. The zoo is the most popular attraction for kids in our city. Slap bang, an informal expression that means exactly or directly often used to emphasize the location of something. Example, the hotel is slap bang in the middle of the city, so it's very convenient for sightseeing. A stone's throw away, a very short distance from something. Example, the beach is just a stone's throw away from our apartment, so we can go there anytime we want. Baggage, Bags and suitcases filled with personal belongings. If you need help with your baggage, we have a cart you can use. Bed and breakfast. A home that offers a place to stay and a place to eat. I can book you a beautiful bed and breakfast on the lake. Bellboy. A staff member who helps guests with their luggage. The bellboy will bring your bags to your room. Book. Arrange to stay in a hotel. I can book your family for the weekend of the 7th. Booked, full, no availability. I'm afraid the hotel is booked tonight. Boutique Hotel, a small, stylish hotel, usually located in a fashionable urban location that has a unique theme, design, and personality. Example, we stayed at a boutique hotel in Paris that had a literary theme and a cozy library. Brand New Hotel, a hotel that has just opened or has been recently renovated, offering modern facilities and services. Example, the brand new hotel in the city center has a rooftop pool and a spa. Brochures, small booklets that provide information on the local sites and attractions. Feel free to take some brochures to your room to look at. Out of this world, extremely good, impressive, or enjoyable. Example, the food at the restaurant was out of this world, especially the dessert. Check in, go to the front desk to receive keys. You can check in anytime after 4 o'clock. Check out, return the keys and pay the bill. Please return your parking pass when you check out. Complimentary breakfast, free of charge. All of our rooms have complimentary breakfast, soap, shampoo, and coffee. Cot, roll away bed, a single bed on wheels that folds up. If you need an extra bed, we have cots available. Damage charge, money a guest owes for repairs to hotel property when caused by violent or careless acts. We will have to add a damage charge for the hole you put in the wall. Deposit, amount paid ahead of time to secure a reservation. You will not receive your deposit back if you cancel. Double bed. 
A bed large enough for two people. They are a family of four, so give them a room with two double beds. Floor, a level of the building. The swimming pool is on the ground floor. Front desk, reception. The place where guests go to check in and out and to get information. Towels are available at the front desk. Guest, a person that is staying at the hotel. Our washrooms are for guests only. Hostel, a very inexpensive place for backpackers and travelers on a budget. In the hostel, you probably won't get your own room. Splash out to spend a lot of money on something that is not necessary but is very enjoyable or attractive. Example, he decided to splash out on a new suit for his interview, hoping to make a good impression. Hotel manager, person in charge at the hotel. I'll let you make your complaint to the hotel manager. Housekeeping maid, staff members that clean the rooms and linen. Put a sign on the door if you want housekeeping to come in and change the sheets on the bed. Ice machine, a machine that automatically makes ice that guests can use to keep drinks cold. There is an ice machine next to the elevator. In a small hotel, usually in the countryside. The inn has a cozy fireplace and a friendly staff. Key card, a plastic card that opens the door to a room. Don't forget your key card when you leave your room. Lobby, the area near the entrance of a hotel where guests can sit and relax. You can wait for your taxi in the lobby. Mini bar, a small refrigerator in a hotel room that contains drinks and snacks. The items in the minibar are not complimentary. You will be charged for them. Motel, a hotel that has rooms with doors that open to the outside, usually near a road. We stayed at a cheap motel on our way to the city. Occupancy, the number of people staying in a hotel. The hotel has a high occupancy rate during the summer season. Reservation, an arrangement to have a room held for you at a hotel. Do you have a reservation with us? Resort, a hotel that offers many activities and services, usually in a scenic or exotic location. The resort has a golf course, a spa, and a casino. Restaurant, a place where guests can eat meals. The hotel has a restaurant that serves breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Room service, a service that allows guests to order food and drinks to their room. If you don't feel like going out, you can order room service. Suite, a large and luxurious hotel room. The suite has a separate living room, a kitchenette, and a jacuzzi. Tip, a small amount of money given to a service worker as a way of thanking them. It is customary to tip the bellboy and the maid. Vacancy, an available room in a hotel. We have one vacancy left for tonight. We fee wireless internet access. The hotel offers free Wi-Fi to all guests. Rave reviews, very positive and enthusiastic comments or opinions about something, especially a book, a movie, or a performance. Example, the new musical received rave reviews from critics and audiences alike. To get pampered, to receive special treatment or attention, especially in a luxurious or indulgent way. Example, she decided to get pampered at the salon and got a manicure, a pedicure, and a massage. Long journey, a trip that takes a lot of time or covers a great distance, either physically or emotionally. Example, he had a long journey from his hometown to the capital, where he hoped to find a better life. A menu, a list of dishes and drinks that are available at a restaurant or a cafe. Example, the menu offers a variety of options, from salads and sandwiches to pasta and pizza. A la carte, a way of ordering food at a restaurant where each dish has a separate price rather than being part of a fixed menu or a buffet. Example, we chose to order a la carte rather than having the set menu because we wanted to try different dishes, changing facilities, rooms or areas where people can change their clothes, usually before or after a sport or a leisure activity. Example, 
The gym has changing facilities with lockers, showers, and hair dryers, towels, pieces of cloth or paper that are used to dry something, especially the body or the hands. Example, the hotel provides towels and toiletries for the guests, sheets, large pieces of cloth that are used to cover a bed or a mattress. Example, she changed the sheets and made the bed. Hidden costs, extra charges or fees that are not included in the advertised or quoted price and that may surprise or deceive the buyer. Example, be careful when you book a flight online because there may be hidden costs such as taxes, baggage fees, or insurance. To play it by ear, to act spontaneously and according to the situation without a fixed plan or rules. Example, we don't have a reservation for dinner, so we'll just play it by ear and see what's available. 9. Getting around The lingo of getting around. Round here, in the vicinity around here. There's a nice cafe round here. Do you want to go there? Skirt, to go around to avoid. We skirted the city center and took the ring road instead. A bit of a pickle. A difficult situation, a predicament. I'm in a bit of a pickle. I don't know how to get to the airport. Brave the traffic. To face the traffic, the congestion. I had to brave the traffic this morning. It was a nightmare. Ring road. A road that goes around a city or town often used to avoid traffic congestion in the center. Take the ring road and exit at Junction 12, then follow the signs to the airport. Snarl up, a situation where traffic is very slow or stopped because of too many vehicles. There was a snarl up on the highway because of an accident, so I was late for work. Steer clear, to avoid someone or something that seems unpleasant, dangerous, or likely to cause problems. You should steer clear of that neighborhood at night. It's not very safe. Jump in a cab. To get into a taxi quickly, usually because you are in a hurry. I have to jump in a cab now or I'll miss my flight. How do I get there? A question to ask for directions to a place. Excuse me. I'm looking for the museum. How do I get there? Is it far from here? A question to ask about the distance between your current location and another place. Is the train station far from here? Do I need to take a bus? Your best bet, your best choice or option, the most likely way to achieve something. If you want to find a cheap hotel, your best bet is to search online. Your best off. The best thing for you to do is to... You're best off taking the subway. It's faster than driving. Go the long way round to take a longer route than necessary, usually to avoid something. I had to go the long way round because the bridge was closed for repairs. A bit of a shortcut, a shorter or quicker way of getting somewhere. I know a bit of a shortcut through the park. It will save us some time. Double back on yourself to go back in the opposite direction that you came from. You've gone too far. You need to double back on yourself and turn left at the traffic light. Cut, nip across, to cross something quickly, such as a road, a field, etc. Let's cut across the parking lot. It's shorter than going around. Cut through, to make a way through something, such as traffic, a crowd, etc. He cut through the traffic and reached the hospital in time. Cut, nip down, to go down a small street or alley to save time. You can nip down this alleyway and come out at the main road. Pop down, to go down a street quickly? I'm just going to pop down to the corner shop. Do you need anything? Come out at on to arrive at or reach a place after going through something. If you follow this path, you'll come out at the lake. End up in Tlaish to finally arrive at a place, especially after a series of events or choices. He took a wrong turn and ended up in the dead end, an alleyway, a narrow street or passage between buildings. The thief ran away through the alleyway, a one-way street, a street where traffic can only move in one direction. 
Be careful, this is a one-way street. You can't turn left here. A dead end, no through road, a street that is closed at one end so that you cannot go any further. This is a dead end. We have to turn back. A back street, road, a street or road that is not very busy or important, often in a poor area. He lives in a back street in the outskirts of the city. Bear left, right, to go slightly to the left or right. Bear left at the fork and you'll see the sign for the hotel. Cross over, to go from one side of something to the other, such as a road, a bridge, etc. Cross over the bridge and take the first right. Follow to go along a road, path, etc., in the same direction as someone or something else. Follow this road for about a mile and you'll see the church on your left. Head for towards to go in the direction of a place or thing. Head for the exit and I'll meet you there. Keep going to continue moving or doing something without stopping. Keep going until you reach the end of the street, then turn right. Make a U-turn to turn your vehicle around in a U-shaped curve so that you can go back the way you came. You can't park here. You have to make a U-turn and find another spot. Opposite, on the other side of something, facing something else. The bank is opposite the post office. You can't miss it. Run into, to meet someone or something unexpectedly or by chance. I ran into an old friend on my way to the library. Turn back, to go back to where you came from or to make someone do this. We had to turn back because the road was blocked by snow. Walk along to move on foot at a normal or relaxed pace following a road, path, etc. Walk along the river and you'll find a nice picnic spot. A bend, a curve in a road, river, etc. Slow down, there's a sharp bend ahead. A bridge, a structure that is built over a river, road, etc. So that people or vehicles can cross from one side to the other. The bridge was closed for maintenance, so we had to take a ferry. A corner, a point or an area where two or more edges, sides, or surfaces of something meet. There's a bookstore on the corner of Main Street and Elm Street. A junction, a place where two or more roads, railways, etc. meet or cross each other. At the next junction, take the exit for the airport. A landmark. A building or place that is easily recognized, especially one that you can use to judge where you are. The Eiffel Tower is a famous landmark in Paris. A sign. A piece of wood, metal, etc. With words or a picture on it that gives information, instructions, a warning, etc. There was a sign saying no entry. A sidewalk. A path with a hard surface on one or both sides of a road that people walk on. Please walk on the sidewalk, not on the road. A traffic light. One of a set of red, yellow, and green lights that control the movement of vehicles, usually at a point where two or more roads join. Wait for the traffic light to turn green before you cross the street. A zebra crossing. A place on a road especially one where there is a lot of traffic, across which wide black and white lines are painted and at which vehicles must stop to allow people to walk across the road. Look both ways before you use the zebra crossing. Ten Time Management Time Management Vocabulary Curfew this is a rule or a law that requires people to stay indoors after a certain time, usually at night. The government imposed a curfew from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. to prevent the spread of the virus. Night Owl. This is a person who likes to stay up late at night and is more active or productive during the night than during the day. He is a night owl. He always works on his projects until 3 a.m. Nightlife. This is the entertainment or social activities that take place at night in a city or a town, such as bars, clubs, concerts, etc. 
She loves the nightlife in Paris. There is always something to do or see. Home time. This is the time when someone has to or wants to go home, especially after a night out. It's getting late. I think it's home time for me. Party animal. This is a person who enjoys going to parties and socializing a lot, often drinking and dancing. He is a party animal. He goes out every weekend and never misses a party. Time crunch. This is a situation where you have very little time to do something or to finish something. I'm in a time crunch right now. I have to finish this report by noon. Time flies. This is an expression that means time passes very quickly, especially when you are having fun or doing something enjoyable. Time flies when you're having fun. I can't believe it's already 10 p.m. Time off. This is a period of time when you are not working or studying and you can relax or do other things. I'm taking some time off next week. I'm going to visit my family in the countryside. Time out. This is a short break or pause in an activity, especially to rest or to calm down. The teacher gave the students a time out after they were too noisy in class. Time saver. This is something that helps you to do something faster or more efficiently and saves you time. Online banking is a great time saver. You don't have to go to the bank to pay your bills. Deadline extension. This is a request or a grant to postpone the deadline for a task or a project. I asked my boss for a deadline extension because I was sick last week. He agreed to give me two more days to finish the report. Time tracking. This is the process of measuring and recording the amount of time spent on various activities. I use a time tracking app to keep track of how much time I spend on each task. It helps me to improve my productivity and efficiency. Time management skills. These are the abilities to plan, organize, prioritize, and execute tasks within a given time frame. Time management skills are essential for any professional who wants to achieve their goals and meet their deadlines. Time management tools. These are the devices, software, or methods that help people to manage their time better. Some common time management tools are calendars, timers, to-do lists, and planners. Time management strategies. These are the techniques or approaches that people use to manage their time effectively. Some popular time management strategies are the Eisenhower Matrix, the Pomodoro Technique, and the SMART Goals. Deadline. This is the final date or time by which something must be completed or delivered. I have a tight deadline for this project. I need to finish it by tomorrow. Procrastinate. This is the act of delaying or postponing something that one should do, often out of laziness or fear. I always procrastinate when I have to write an essay. I end up doing it at the last minute. Schedule. This is a plan that lists the times or dates when certain events or tasks will happen. I have a busy schedule today. I have to go to work, then to the gym, then to a meeting, and then to a party. Punctual. This is an adjective that describes someone who arrives or does something at the expected or agreed time. He is very punctual. He never arrives late to class or to appointments. 
time zone. This is a region of the world that has a standard time that is different from other regions. France is in the Central European time zone, which is one hour ahead of the Greenwich Mean time zone. Daylight saving time, a period of time when the clocks are moved forward one hour in the spring and back one hour in the fall. Daylight saving time starts on the second Sunday in March. Spring forward, to move the clocks forward one hour in the spring. We spring forward at 2 a.m. on Sunday. Fall back, to move the clocks back one hour in the fall. We fall back at 2 a.m. on Sunday. Clocks go forward. This is a phrase that means to adjust the clocks one hour ahead, usually in spring, to start the daylight saving time. Don't forget that the clocks go forward this weekend. You will lose one hour of sleep. Clocks go back. This is a phrase that means to adjust the clocks one hour back, usually in autumn, to end the daylight saving time. The good thing about the clocks going back is that you get an extra hour of sleep. To bank on it, this is a phrase that means to be sure or certain of something, to rely or depend on something. You can bank on it that he will be late, he always is. Let's aim. This is a phrase that means to have a goal or a plan to do something, to try or attempt to do something. Let's aim to finish this project by next week. We don't want to procrastinate. End up, this is a phrasal verb that means to reach a final or unexpected result, situation, or place. We ended up going to the cinema instead of the museum. It was raining too much. Get home. This is a phrasal verb that means to arrive at one's house or place of residence. What time did you get home last night? You looked very tired this morning. Couple of hours. This is a phrase that means a small or approximate number of hours, usually two or three. I only slept for a couple of hours. I had to study for the exam. To drop somebody home, this is a phrase that means to drive or take someone to their home, usually as a favor or a courtesy. Can you drop me home after the party? I don't have a car. To head back, this is a phrase that means to return or go back to a place, usually where one came from or where one lives. It's getting late. I think I'm going to head back to my hotel. A lion. This is a noun that means a time when one stays in bed longer than usual, especially in the morning. I love having a lion on Sundays. It's so relaxing. A late finish. This is a noun that means a time when one finishes work or an activity later than usual or expected. I had a late finish at work today. There was a lot of paperwork to do. To meet up, to go to the same place at the same time. We're meeting up at the park at 7 p.m. To stay up, to not go to bed. I stayed up late studying for my exam. To be up late, to be awake late at night. I was up late watching a movie. To yawn, to open your mouth wide and breathe in deeply. I yawned because I was tired. To get up, to wake up from sleep. I got up at 6 a.m. to go for a run. To be an early riser, to be someone who usually wakes up early. 
I'm an early riser because I like to have a lot of time in the morning. To be a late riser. To be someone who usually wakes up late. I'm a late riser because I don't like to get out of bed. To be groggy, to feel sleepy or confused after waking up. I was feeling groggy after waking up so early. Eleven travel problems. To miss one's flight. To arrive too late to board the plane. I missed my flight because of the traffic jam. Assault. A violent attack on someone. She was assaulted by a stranger in the street. To be sick, to feel ill or vomit. He was sick after eating some street food. To be robbed, to have something stolen from one by force or threat. They were robbed at gunpoint in the hotel. To change one's ticket, to modify the date, time or destination of one's travel reservation. She had to change her ticket because of a family emergency. Lost luggage. Baggage that has not arrived at the same destination as the passenger. They had to wait for hours to claim their lost luggage. Passport. A document that identifies a person's nationality and allows them to travel to other countries. He forgot his passport and couldn't board the plane. Visa. A permit that allows a person to enter, stay, or work in a foreign country. She needed a visa to visit China. Customs, the place where travellers have to declare what they are bringing into or taking out of a country. He had to pay a fine at customs for bringing in prohibited items. Currency the type of money that is used in a country. She exchanged her euros for dollars at the currency exchange office. Exchange rate, the value of one currency compared to another. The exchange rate was very favorable for him. Station, a place where buses or trains stop to pick up or drop off passengers. He waited at the station for his bus. Terminal, a building at an airport where passengers check in, board or leave planes. She went to the terminal to check in for her flight. Seat, a place where a person can sit, especially on a plane, bus or train. She had a window seat on the plane. Reservation, an arrangement to have a seat on a plane, bus, or train, or a room in a hotel. She made a reservation for a hotel in Paris. Confirmation, a proof that a reservation has been made and accepted. He received a confirmation email for his flight. Cancellation, the act of calling off or stopping a reservation or a flight. She had to cancel her trip because of the pandemic. Delay, the situation when a plane, bus or train leaves or arrives later than expected. He experienced a delay of three hours on his flight. Refund. The act of giving back money to a customer who is not satisfied with a product or service. She asked for a refund for her cancelled flight. Insurance. A contract in which a person or company agrees to pay for the cost of damage, loss or injury in exchange for a regular payment. He bought travel insurance to cover any unexpected expenses. Emergency, a serious or dangerous situation that requires immediate action. 
She had to call the emergency number when she had an accident. Doctor. A person who is trained and licensed to treat sick or injured people. He saw a doctor for his fever. Medicine. A substance that is used to treat or prevent an illness or injury. She took some medicine for her headache. Pharmacy, a place where medicines are sold or given out. He went to the pharmacy to buy some painkillers. Allergy, a medical condition that causes a person to have a bad reaction to something that is harmless to most people. She had an allergy to peanuts and had to avoid them. Infection, a disease that is caused by bacteria, viruses, or other organisms that enter the body. He had an infection in his wound and needed antibiotics. Vaccine, a substance that is injected into a person or animal to protect them from a specific disease. She got a vaccine for COVID-19 before traveling. Quarantine, a period of time when a person or animal that has or may have a disease is kept away from others to prevent the disease from spreading. He had to quarantine for 14 days after arriving in the country. Lockdown, a situation when people are not allowed to leave their homes or travel freely because of a dangerous disease or other emergency. She was stuck in lockdown in her hotel room. Scam, a dishonest or illegal scheme or trick to get money or something else from someone. She was a victim of a scam and lost her credit card information. Bargain, a thing that is bought or sold for a good price, especially one that is cheaper than usual. She found a bargain at the flea market and bought a vintage dress. Complaint. A statement that expresses dissatisfaction or unhappiness about something. She made a complaint to the manager about the noise in her room. Review. A written or spoken opinion or evaluation of something, such as a product, a service, a book, a movie, etc. He wrote a review for the hotel he stayed at and rated it four stars. Recommendation. A suggestion or advice that something is good or suitable for a particular purpose or situation. She asked for a recommendation for a good restaurant in the area. Language barrier. A difficulty in communicating with people who speak a different language. He faced a language barrier when he traveled to China and didn't speak Mandarin. To overbook, to sell or reserve more seats or rooms than are available. The airline overbooked the flight and offered vouchers to some passengers who agreed to take a later flight. To upgrade, to improve the quality or standard of something, or to give or receive a better service or product than the one originally booked or paid for. She was upgraded to first class for free because of her frequent flyer status. To downgrade, to reduce the quality or standard of something, or to give or receive a worse service or product than the one originally booked or paid for. He was downgraded to economy class because of a technical problem with his seat. Layover, a period of time when a plane stops at an airport before continuing its journey. She had a long layover in Dubai and decided to visit the city. Stopover, a short stay in a place during a long journey, usually by air. He had a stopover in Singapore and stayed at a hotel near the airport. Jet lag, a feeling of tiredness and confusion that people experience after making a long journey by plane to a place where the time is different from the place they left. 
She suffered from jet lag and couldn't sleep well for the first few days. Motion sickness, a feeling of nausea and dizziness that some people get when they travel by car, boat, plane or train. He took some medication to prevent motion sickness before boarding the boat. Altitude sickness, a condition that affects some people who travel to high places such as mountains and causes difficulty in breathing, headache, nausea, etc. She experienced altitude sickness when she climbed the Everest base camp. Dehydration a condition that occurs when a person loses more water than they take in and causes thirst, dryness, weakness, etc. He became dehydrated after walking in the desert for hours. Sunburn, a condition that affects the skin when it has been exposed to too much sun and causes redness, pain, swelling, etc. She got sunburned after lying on the beach without sunscreen. Heat stroke, a serious condition that occurs when a person's body temperature becomes too high because of exposure to hot weather and causes headache, confusion, fainting, etc. He suffered from heat stroke after running a marathon in the summer. Hypothermia. A dangerous condition that occurs when a person's body temperature becomes too low because of exposure to cold weather and causes shivering, drowsiness, unconsciousness, etc. She developed hypothermia after falling into the icy water. Frostbite, a condition that affects the skin and other tissues when they are exposed to very low temperatures and causes numbness, blisters, gangrene, etc. He got frostbite on his fingers and toes after skiing in the snow. Food poisoning, a condition that affects the digestive system when a person eats food that is contaminated with harmful bacteria, viruses or toxins and causes vomiting, diarrhea, fever, etc. She contracted food poisoning after eating some raw fish at a sushi restaurant. Traveler's diarrhea, a common condition that affects the digestive system when a person travels to a different country or region and causes loose stools, cramps, nausea, etc. He suffered from traveler's diarrhea after eating some street food in China. Bed bugs. Small insects that live in mattresses, furniture or clothing and feed on human blood, causing itchy bites and skin rashes. She found bedbugs in her hotel room and had to change rooms. Mosquito net. A fine net that is hung over a bed or a window to prevent mosquitoes or other insects from entering. He slept under a mosquito net to protect himself from malaria. Insect repellent, a substance that is applied to the skin or clothing to keep insects away. She sprayed some insect repellent on her arms and legs before going hiking in the jungle. Sunscreen, a substance that is applied to the skin to protect it from the sun's ultraviolet rays. He applied some sunscreen on his face and neck before going surfing in the ocean. First aid kit, a set of supplies and equipment that is used to give basic medical treatment to someone who is injured or ill. She carried a first aid kit in her backpack in case of an emergency. Water filter, a device that is used to remove impurities or contaminants from water, making it safe to drink. He used a water filter to purify the water from the river. Travel adapter, a device that is used to connect electrical appliances or devices to different types of sockets or voltages in different countries. She bought a travel adapter to charge her laptop and phone in Europe. Couchsurfing, 
a type of accommodation that involves staying for free at someone's home, usually a stranger who is willing to host travellers. He tried couch surfing and had a great experience with his host. Homestay, a type of accommodation that involves staying with a local family, usually as part of a cultural exchange or a language learning programme. He chose a homestay and learned a lot about the local culture and customs. Glamping, a type of accommodation that involves staying in a luxurious or comfortable tent, cabin or other structure, usually in a natural setting. He splurged on glamping and enjoyed the amenities and services of a hotel. Sightseeing, the activity of visiting and seeing places of interest, such as monuments, museums, etc. She spent the day sightseeing and took many photos. Bungee jumping, the activity of jumping from a high place, such as a bridge or a crane, with a long elastic cord attached to one's ankles. He went bungee jumping and felt the adrenaline rush. Culture shock, a feeling of confusion, anxiety or discomfort that a person may experience when they encounter a different or unfamiliar culture. She experienced culture shock when she moved to India and had to adjust to the new customs and lifestyle. 12 studies Studies vocabulary Buried under a pile of assignments Overwhelmed by a large amount of tasks or projects Struggling to manage workload I can't join you for lunch today I'm buried under a pile of assignments that need to be completed by tomorrow What are you majoring in? Inquiring about the main field of study or academic specialization. I'm curious. What are you majoring in at university? I've always been fascinated by different academic pursuits. I'm knee deep in. Deeply involved or immersed in a particular activity or situation. Apologies for the delayed response. I'm knee deep in preparing for my final exams at the moment. It was intense but rewarding. Describing a challenging experience that ultimately had positive outcomes. The research project was intense but rewarding. We discovered new insights that could potentially reshape the industry. I'm still grappling with. Struggling to understand or come to terms with a complex idea or situation. I'm still grappling with the concepts introduced in the last lecture. I might need some extra study sessions. A term paper. A long essay or research paper assigned for a specific academic term. The professor asked us to choose a topic for our term paper early in the semester. Hackathon. An event where programmers collaborate intensively on software projects within a short time frame. I participated in a hour hackathon last weekend. The team developed a groundbreaking app by the end of it. Regular grind. Daily routine or monotonous work pattern. Despite the regular grind, finding small joys in everyday tasks is essential for maintaining motivation. I'll stick to my books for now. Preferring to focus on studying or academic pursuits at the moment. I appreciate the invitation. But I'll stick to my books for now as exams are just around the corner. Have you decided on your minor? Asking if someone has chosen a secondary field of study in addition to their major. Hey, have you decided on your minor yet? I'm considering mining in psychology. Career paths. Different options or trajectories one can take in their professional life. Exploring various career paths before graduation is crucial for making informed decisions about the future. Smart move. Acknowledging a wise or intelligent decision. Choosing to intern during the summer was a smart move. 
it provided valuable real-world experience. You're on fire. Complimenting someone for performing exceptionally well or being highly productive. In the debate competition, your arguments were brilliant. You're on fire today. That is my only forte. Emphasizing a particular skill or talent as one's primary strength. I might not excel in all subjects, but when it comes to mathematics, that is my only forte. Let's catch up soon. Expressing a desire to meet or reconnect with someone in the near future. It's been a while. Let's catch up soon over coffee and share how things have been going. By the way, introducing additional information or changing the topic in a conversation. By the way, did you hear about the upcoming seminar on artificial intelligence? It sounds fascinating. To fully grasp, to completely understand or comprehend a concept or idea. It took me a while to fully grasp the concept of quantum mechanics, but now I find it incredibly intriguing. He's my advisor. Referring to a person who provides guidance and advice in an academic or professional context. If you have questions about course selection, feel free to ask. He's my advisor and very knowledgeable. Assignment. A task or piece of work assigned to someone as part of their academic or professional responsibilities. The professor handed out a challenging assignment that requires thorough research and analysis. Teamwork makes the dream work, right? Emphasizing the importance of collaboration in achieving common goals or success. We may have different strengths, but together, we make an unbeatable team. Teamwork makes the dream work, right? Breakthroughs. Significant discoveries or advancements in a particular field. Scientific research often leads to breakthroughs that revolutionize our understanding of the world. Attend. To be present at an event, class, or meeting. I plan to attend the workshop on entrepreneurship. It could provide valuable insights for my future endeavors. Bubble. A closed or limited environment that isolates individuals from external influences. Living in a small town can create a bit of a bubble. Sometimes, it's good to step outside and explore the world. We're planning a movie night. Organizing an evening to watch movies together as a group or with friends. We're planning a movie night this Friday. Do you have any film preferences or should we choose something interesting? It was great catching up. Expressing enjoyment and satisfaction after reconnecting with someone. It was great catching up with you at the alumni reunion. Reminiscing about old times brought back some wonderful memories. I've been meaning to check it out. Expressing a desire or intention to explore or experience something. The new art exhibition opened downtown, and I've been meaning to check it out. Perhaps we can go together. Thanks for the heads up. Expressing gratitude for being informed or alerted about something. Thanks for the heads up about the changed schedule. I would have missed the meeting if you hadn't mentioned it. Grab a bite. To get a quick meal or snack, often in a casual or informal setting. I have some time before the lecture. Want to grab a quick bite at the cafeteria together? Looking forward to it. Expressing anticipation or excitement about a future event or activity. We've planned a weekend getaway, and I'm looking forward to it. A break from routine will be refreshing. Sounds like a plan. Agreeing with a proposed idea or course of action. You suggested studying together for the exam? Sounds like a plan. We can review the material more efficiently that way. Academic discourse. The formal and scholarly exchange of ideas and information within an educational context. Engaging in academic discourse during seminars helps broaden our perspectives and deepen our understanding of the subject matter. Peer review. 
the evaluation of scholarly work by others in the same field of study. Before submitting my research paper, I always seek peer review to ensure the quality and accuracy of my work. Constructive feedback. Feedback that provides helpful suggestions and guidance for improvement. I appreciate your constructive feedback on my presentation. It will certainly help me refine my delivery skills. Group study session. A collaborative learning session where students study together, sharing insights and clarifying doubts. Let's organize a group study session this weekend to tackle the challenging topics for the upcoming exam. Class participation. Involvement in class discussions, contributing ideas, and actively engaging with the material. Class participation is a crucial aspect of the course. It not only enhances learning but also fosters a dynamic learning environment. Thesis statement. A concise summary of the main point or claim of an academic paper or essay. Crafting a clear and compelling thesis statement is essential for guiding the reader through the main arguments of your research. Academic integrity. Adhering to ethical standards in academic work. Avoiding plagiarism and dishonesty. Maintaining academic integrity is fundamental. Always cite your sources and submit original work. Debate team. A group of students who engage in formal argumentation on specific topics. Joining the debate team has not only improved my public speaking skills but also broadened my perspective on various issues. Extracurricular activities. Non-academic activities undertaken by students outside of regular classes. Participating in extracurricular activities such as clubs and sports enhances the overall college experience. Oral presentation. A spoken delivery of information, often accompanied by visual aids, as part of academic assessment. Preparing for the oral presentation was nerve-wracking, but it allowed me to effectively communicate my research findings. Intellectual exchange. A sharing of ideas and intellectual discussions among students, often leading to deeper insights. The coffee shop became a hub for intellectual exchange, where students from different majors discussed diverse topics. Critical thinking. The ability to analyze information, assess arguments, and form independent judgments. Encouraging critical thinking in academic discussions fosters a culture of inquiry and independent thought. Study abroad program. An opportunity for students to pursue part of their education in a foreign country. Participating in a study abroad program opened my eyes to different cultures and global perspectives. Academic advisor. A faculty member who provides guidance on academic matters, course selection, and career planning. Meeting with my academic advisor regularly has been instrumental in mapping out my academic and career goals. Research methodology. The systematic approach and techniques used to conduct academic research. Understanding research methodology is crucial for designing a robust and credible research study. Dialogue journal. A written exchange between students, typically used for reflective or collaborative purposes. We maintained a dialogue journal throughout the semester, sharing thoughts on readings and class discussions. Academic rigor. The level of difficulty and challenge associated with academic coursework and standards. The university is known for its academic rigor, ensuring students are well prepared for future challenges. Graduation requirements. The criteria and courses necessary for completing a degree and graduating from an educational institution. Understanding graduation requirements is essential to plan a course schedule that meets all academic criteria. Interdisciplinary studies. The integration of knowledge and methods from multiple academic disciplines. 
I chose interdisciplinary studies to explore the intersections between psychology, sociology, and environmental science. Classmate camaraderie a sense of friendship and mutual support among classmates. Classmate camaraderie enhances the overall learning experience, creating a supportive academic community. 13. Disease and Health Blood pressure, the force of blood pushing against the walls of your arteries. High blood pressure can cause heart problems and stroke. Low blood pressure can cause dizziness and fainting. You should check your blood pressure regularly and keep it under control. I feel weak. A phrase used to express that you have a lack of strength or energy. You may feel weak due to illness, hunger, fatigue, or stress. I feel weak and tired. I think I need to rest. Keep water down, a phrase used to indicate that you are able to drink water without vomiting. You may have trouble keeping water down if you have nausea, stomach flu, or food poisoning. I can't keep water down. I keep throwing up everything I drink. Contagious, a word used to describe a disease or condition that can be spread from one person to another through direct or indirect contact. You may be contagious if you have a cold, flu, chickenpox, or COVID-19. Stay away from me. I'm contagious. I don't want to infect you. To be laid up. A phrase used to indicate that you are unable to do your normal activities due to illness or injury. You may be laid up if you have a broken leg, a back pain, or a surgery. I'm sorry I can't come to work today. I'm laid up with the flu. To have a pain. A phrase used to express that you are suffering from a physical discomfort or ache in a part of your body. You may have a pain if you have a headache, a toothache, or a cramp. I have a pain in my stomach. I think I ate something bad. To operate. A verb used to describe the action of performing a surgery on someone. A surgery is a medical procedure that involves cutting, removing, or repairing a part of the body. The doctor had to operate on him to remove his appendix. Surgery, a noun used to refer to the medical procedure of operating on someone. It can also refer to the place where surgeries are performed. She had a surgery to fix her heart valve. She is recovering in the surgery ward. To be getting worse, a phrase used to indicate that your condition or situation is deteriorating or becoming more severe. You may be getting worse if your symptoms are increasing, your pain is intensifying, or your test results are showing negative signs. He is getting worse by the day. He needs urgent medical attention. To lose appetite, a phrase used to express that you have a reduced or no desire to eat. You may lose appetite if you are sick, depressed, or stressed. She has lost appetite since her husband died. She barely eats anything. To have a rash, a phrase used to indicate that you have a skin condition that causes redness, itching, or bumps on your skin. You may have a rash if you are allergic, infected, or irritated by something. He has a rash on his arm. He must have touched some poison ivy. A course of antibiotics, a noun phrase used to refer to a prescribed amount and duration of taking antibiotics. Antibiotics are medicines that kill or stop the growth of bacteria that cause infections. The doctor gave me a course of antibiotics for my strep throat. I have to take them for 10 days. Fire away. A phrase used to invite someone to ask a question or say something. It can also be used to encourage someone to start or continue doing something. Do you have any questions for me? Fire away. I'm ready to answer. 
to squeeze me in, a phrase used to request someone to fit you into the busy schedule or agenda. You may ask someone to squeeze you in if you need their help, service, or attention urgently. Can you squeeze me in for a haircut today? I have a wedding to attend tomorrow. Malaise, a noun used to refer to a general feeling of discomfort, illness, or uneasiness. You may experience malaise if you are sick, tired, or unhappy. He felt a malaise that he couldn't explain. He just wanted to stay in bed all day. Ailment, a noun used to refer to a minor illness or disorder. You may have an ailment if you have a cough, a sore throat, or a fever. She suffers from various ailments, such as arthritis, asthma, and diabetes. Pharmacy, a noun used to refer to a place where medicines are sold or dispensed. You may go to a pharmacy if you need to buy or refill your prescription drugs, over-the-counter drugs, or other health products. I need to go to the pharmacy to get some painkillers for my headache. Remedy, a noun used to refer to a medicine or treatment that cures or relieves a disease or problem. You may use a remedy if you have a cold, a wound, or a stomach ache. He tried various remedies for his insomnia, such as drinking warm milk, listening to soothing music, and reading a book. Rehabilitation, a noun used to refer to the process of restoring someone's health, ability, or function after an illness, injury, or addiction. You may need rehabilitation if you have a stroke, a spinal cord injury, or a drug problem. She underwent a rehabilitation program after her car accident. She had to learn how to walk and talk again. Physiotherapy, a noun used to refer to a type of therapy that uses physical methods, such as exercises, massage, or heat, to treat diseases, injuries, or disabilities. You may need physiotherapy if you have a muscle strain, a joint pain, or a nerve damage. He had physiotherapy sessions to help him recover from his knee surgery. They helped him improve his mobility and strength. Immunization, a noun used to refer to the process of making someone immune or resistant to a disease, usually by giving them a vaccine. A vaccine is a substance that contains a weakened or killed form of a virus or bacteria that causes a disease. She received immunization against measles, mumps, and rubella when she was a child. She is protected from these diseases. Inoculation. A noun used to refer to the act of injecting someone with a vaccine or a microorganism to protect them from a disease. It can also refer to the introduction of an idea or a culture into a new environment. He was inoculated with the COVID-19 vaccine. He is now immune to the coronavirus. Holistic, an adjective used to describe an approach that considers the whole person or system, rather than just a part or an aspect. It can be applied to medicine, education, psychology, or ecology. She prefers holistic medicine to conventional medicine. She believes that the mind, body, and spirit are interconnected and affect each other. Homeopathy. A noun used to refer to a system of alternative medicine that treats diseases with very small doses of natural substances that would cause similar symptoms in healthy people. It is based on the principle of, like cures like. He uses homeopathy to treat his allergies. He takes diluted extracts of pollen, dust, and animal hair. Wellness. A noun used to refer to the state of being healthy and happy in all aspects of life, such as physical, mental, emotional, and social. It can also refer to the activities or practices that promote wellness, such as exercise, meditation, or nutrition. She is very conscious about her wellness. She eats well, sleeps well, and works well. Infirmary. 
a noun used to refer to a place where sick or injured people are given medical care, especially in a school, a prison, or a military camp. It can also refer to a small hospital or clinic. He was taken to the infirmary after he fainted in the classroom. He had low blood sugar. Resilience. A noun used to refer to the ability to recover quickly from difficulties or challenges. It can also refer to the capacity to withstand or adapt to stress or change. She has a lot of resilience. She bounced back from her divorce and started a new life. Hygiene. A noun used to refer to the practice of keeping oneself and one's surroundings clean and healthy. It can also refer to the science of preventing diseases and promoting health. He has poor hygiene. He doesn't brush his teeth, wash his hands, or take a shower. Prophylactic. An adjective used to describe something that is intended to prevent or protect against a disease or a problem. It can also be used as a noun to refer to such a thing. She takes prophylactic measures to avoid getting sick. She wears a mask, sanitizes her hands, and avoids crowded places. Halter monitor. A noun used to refer to a device that records the electrical activity of the heart over a period of time usually 24 to 48 hours. It is used to diagnose or monitor heart problems, such as arrhythmia, angina, or heart attack. He wore a halter monitor to check his heart rate and rhythm. 14. Apartment location. I haven't seen you in a while. This means that you have not met or talked to someone for a long time. Hi, John. I haven't seen you in a while. How have you been? The landlord is raising the rent. This means that the owner of the property you are renting is increasing the amount of money you have to pay every month. I have to find a new place to live. The landlord is raising the rent and I can't afford it. I can't afford it. This means that you do not have enough money to buy or pay for something. I would love to go on vacation with you, but I can't afford it. I have to save money for my rent. Too pokey. This means that something is too small or cramped. You can use this expression to describe a place that does not have enough space or comfort. I don't like this flat. It's too pokey. I can barely fit my bed and my desk in the room. Property ladder. The process of buying and selling houses or flats, usually with the aim of moving to a bigger or better one. I want to get on the property ladder as soon as possible. I'm tired of renting and paying someone else's mortgage. Save enough for a deposit. To accumulate enough money to pay a large sum of money in advance when you buy a property. It's hard to save enough for a deposit these days. The prices are so high and the wages are so low. Drifting apart. This means to become less close or friendly with someone over time. We used to be best friends, but we drifted apart after we moved to different cities. We don't talk as much as we used to. Hit the nail on the head. This means to say or do something that is exactly right or accurate. You hit the nail on the head. That's exactly what I think about the situation. Stretch to it. 
This means to manage to afford or do something, but with difficulty or effort. I can stretch to it, but it will be tight. I'll have to cut down on some expenses to make it work. Cut down on some expenses. Reduce the amount of money you spend on something. You can use this expression to talk about your budget or your ways of saving money. I have to cut down on some expenses. I spend too much on eating out and shopping. Maintenance. The cost of keeping a property in good condition, such as repairing, painting, cleaning, etc. I have to pay 100 euros per month for maintenance. The landlord is responsible for fixing any problems in the flat. Fate. This means the power or force that determines what happens in your life, especially things that you cannot control or predict. I don't believe in fate. I think we make our own choices and create our own opportunities. Sofa surfing. This means the practice of staying with different friends or relatives for a short period of time, sleeping on their sofas or spare beds. I don't have a fixed address. I'm sofa surfing until I find a place of my own. House sharing. This means the practice of sharing a house or a flat with other people, splitting the rent and the bills. You can use this expression to talk about your living situation or your preferences. I like house sharing. It's cheaper and more fun than living alone. I have three flatmates and we get along well. Hassle. This means a problem, difficulty, or annoyance that causes trouble or inconvenience. It's such a hassle to find a good rental apartment. You have to deal with agents, landlords, contracts, deposits, etc. To live out of a bag. This means to have all your belongings in a bag or a suitcase and move from one place to another frequently. I don't like to live out of a bag. I prefer to have a stable and comfortable home. To be up close and personal, this means to be very close to someone or something, physically or emotionally. I got to be up close and personal with my favorite singer. I met him backstage and he gave me a hug and a kiss. Splitting the rent and the bills. This means to divide the cost of the rent and the utilities, such as electricity, gas, water, internet, etc., among the people who live in the same property. We're splitting the rent and the bills equally. We each pay 400 euros per month. Sounds more appealing. This means that something seems more attractive interesting or desirable than something else house sharing sounds more appealing than sofa surfing i don't like to depend on other people's hospitality browsing online this means to look at different websites or pages on the internet usually without a specific purpose or goal i spend a lot of time browsing online I like to read news, watch videos, play games, etc. To bite the bullet. To do something that is difficult, unpleasant, or painful, but necessary or unavoidable. I decided to bite the bullet and contact the owner of the flat. I was nervous, but I had to do it. To take it on the spot. This means to accept or agree to something immediately, without hesitation or delay. 
I liked the flat so much that I decided to take it on the spot. I didn't want to miss the opportunity. Turn up for the books. This means a surprising or unexpected event or situation, usually a positive one. It was a turn up for the books. I didn't expect to find such a nice flat at such a reasonable price. I was chuffed to bits. This means that you were very pleased, happy, or proud of something. I was chuffed to bits. I finally found a place to live that suited my needs and my budget. Flatmates? Do you get along with them? This means the people who share a flat with you. Do you have a good relationship with them? How are your flatmates? Do you get along with them? Do you have any problems or conflicts? Hang out together. This means to spend time with someone or a group of people, usually in a casual or informal way. We often hang out together. We watch movies, play games, cook meals, etc. It's like having a second family. You really landed on your feet. This means that you were very lucky or fortunate to find yourself in a good situation, especially after a difficult or challenging one. You really landed on your feet. You found a great flat with great flatmates. You should be very grateful for this opportunity. He's going down that road. He is choosing a certain path or direction in his life, usually implying that it is a difficult, risky, or undesirable one. He's going down that road of gambling and drinking. He's ruining his life and his family. Utilities. This means the services that are provided for the use of a property, such as electricity, gas, water, internet, etc. The rent is not too bad, but the utilities are very expensive. I have to pay 200 euros per month for them. We should wrap it up. We should finish or conclude something, usually implying that it is taking too long or that we have other things to do. We should wrap it up. It's getting late and I have to go. It was nice catching up with you. It was pleasant to talk to someone and learn about their recent news or events, especially if you have not been in contact with them for a while. It was nice catching up with you. I'm glad to hear that you're doing well. Let's keep in touch. 15 at school. High school. This is the name given to the secondary level of education in some English-speaking countries, such as the United States, Canada or Australia. I'm going to start high school next year. It's a big step. This is an expression that means that it is an important change or a difficult decision to take in life. Moving to another country is a big step. Have you got your uniform sorted? This is a question that asks if you have prepared your school uniform. The word sorted means sorted or settled. Have you got your uniform sorted for tomorrow? I'm wearing trousers instead. This is a sentence that indicates that you are wearing trousers instead of another piece of clothing. I'm wearing trousers instead of a skirt today. 
back in the day. This is an expression that refers to a past time, often with a nostalgic or humorous nuance. Back in the day, we used to walk to school every morning. That sounds awful. This is a sentence that expresses that you find something horrible or unpleasant. That sounds awful. I'm sorry you had to go through that. They've done away with that now. This is a sentence that means that they have eliminated or abolished something. They've done away with that rule now. You can wear whatever you want. GCSEs This is the acronym for General Certificate of Secondary Education which is the name of the diploma obtained at the end of secondary school in the United Kingdom. It's obtained at 14 years old approximately. I'm studying hard for my GCSEs. Compulsory courses These are the mandatory courses that you have to take in a school program. Maths and English are compulsory courses in high school. A diary. This is a notebook or a book where you write your thoughts, feelings or personal events. I keep a diary to record my daily life. Assignments. These are the tasks or homework that you have to do for a course. I have three assignments due next week. Deadlines These are the deadlines for submitting or completing something. I have to meet the deadlines for my assignments. That sounds awesome. This is a sentence that expresses that you find something awesome or impressive. That sounds awesome. I'd love to join you. How do you feel about that? This is a question that asks someone's opinion or emotion about something. How do you feel about the new teacher? I'm excited, but also a bit scared. This is a sentence that shows that you are both enthusiastic and nervous for something. I'm excited, but also a bit scared, for my first day of high school. School supplies These are the school supplies that you use to study or work. I need to buy some school supplies for the new term. Textbooks These are the books that contain the information or exercises for a course. We have to read chapter 5 of the textbook for tomorrow. Pencils these are the pencils that you use to write or draw. I always carry a few pencils in my bag. Pencil cases These are the cases where you store your pencils or pens. I have a cute pencil case with a panda on it. Rulers these are the rulers that you use to measure or draw lines. I need a ruler to draw a graph. Folders These are the folders or binders where you store your sheets or documents. 
I have a folder for each subject. Stationary This is the generic name that refers to the stationary items, such as pencils, pens, notebooks, etc. I love shopping for stationery. There are so many colors and designs to choose from. Do you have a band? This is a question that asks if you are part of a musical group. Do you have a band? I love music. We sometimes perform at school events. This is a sentence that indicates that you occasionally play music at school occasions. We sometimes perform at school events. It's fun and challenging. I'll let you know when we have a gig. This is a sentence that means that you will inform someone when you have a concert or a show. I'll let you know when we have a gig. You should come and see us. They have catchy songs and good lyrics. This is a sentence that praises the quality of someone's music. They have catchy songs and good lyrics. I'm a fan of their band. Classmates These are the people who are in the same class or grade as you. I have some nice classmates. We help each other with our assignments. I'm a bit shy. This is a sentence that describes your personality as being reserved or timid. I'm a bit shy. I don't talk much in class. To hang out with you after school. This is a phrase that means to spend time with you after school hours. I'd love to hang out with you after school. We can go to the park or the library. I'm glad we met. This is a sentence that expresses your happiness for meeting someone. I'm glad we met. You are a good friend. 16 money. Currency. The money that is used in a particular country, such as dollars, euros, pounds, etc. The official currency of Japan is the yen. A banknote. A piece of paper money that has a certain value, such as a $10 bill, a 20 euro note, etc. He paid with a 50 pound banknote. ATM. An abbreviation for automated teller machine, a device that allows you to withdraw cash from your bank account using a card and a PIN code. She went to the nearest ATM to get some money for the taxi. An account, a record of the money that you have in a bank or that you owe to a company or a person, or that they owe you. He opened a new account with a different bank. A checkbook. A book of checks that you can use to pay for things by writing the amount and signing your name. She always carries her checkbook in her purse. A balance. The amount of money that you have in your bank account or that you owe on your credit card. He checked his balance online before making a purchase. To borrow. To take or receive something especially money, from someone with the intention of giving it back. She borrowed some money from her friend to pay the rent. A loan. An amount of money that you borrow from a bank or another person and that you have to pay back, 
usually with interest. He took out a loan to buy a car. A debit card. A plastic card that you can use to pay for things directly from your bank account. She used her debit card to buy groceries. A credit card. A plastic card that you can use to pay for things by borrowing money from a bank or a company, which you have to pay back later, usually with interest. He paid with his credit card and got some reward points. A debit card and a credit card are two types of cards that you can use to pay for things, but with different ways of accessing money. A debit card uses the money that you already have in your bank account, while a credit card uses the money that you borrow from a bank or a company. She prefers to use a debit card rather than a credit card, because she doesn't want to pay interest. A rate. A fixed amount of money that is charged or paid for something, such as interest, exchange, tax, etc. The bank offered him a low rate on his mortgage. A mortgage. A loan that you get from a bank or another institution to buy a house or a property, which you have to pay back over a long period of time. She applied for a mortgage to buy her first home. Fees. Amounts of money that you have to pay for a service, a membership, a course, etc. He paid the fees for his online course. To save. To keep or store money for future use, rather than spending it. She saves 10% of her income every month. A savings account. A bank account that pays you interest on the money that you save in it. He opened a savings account for his son's education. Bookkeeping. The activity of recording the money that is spent and received by a business or an organization. She does the bookkeeping for her family's restaurant. An accountant. A person who is trained and qualified to keep and examine the financial records of a business or an individual. He hired an accountant to do his taxes. A share. A unit of ownership in a company or a business, which you can buy or sell on the stock market. She bought some shares of Apple when they were cheap. Overheads. The regular and necessary costs of running a business or an organization, such as rent, electricity, salaries, etc. He tried to reduce the overheads of his company by switching to renewable energy. To issue shares. To make new shares of a company or a business available for people to buy. The company issued shares to raise more capital. A fine. An amount of money that you have to pay as a punishment for breaking a law or a rule. He got a fine for speeding. A grant. An amount of money that is given by a government or an organization to someone for a specific purpose, such as education, research, etc. She received a grant to study abroad. Window cashier. A cashier who works behind a window or a counter, usually in a bank or a financial institution. She works as a window cashier at the local bank and enjoys helping people with their financial needs. A cashier. A person who works in a store or a bank and who takes and gives money to customers. She works as a cashier at the supermarket. A cash desk. A place in a store where you pay for the things that you buy. He went to the cash desk to pay for his items. A bargain. Something that you buy for a lower price than usual or than expected. She found a bargain at the flea market. To barter. 
to exchange goods or services for other goods or services, without using money. He bartered his old books for some new ones. A bill, a piece of paper that shows how much money you owe for something that you have bought or used, such as a meal, a phone call, a service, etc. She asked for the bill after finishing her dinner. To be broke, to have no money or very little money. He was broke after losing his job. The charge, the amount of money that you have to pay for something, especially for a service or a facility. She paid the charge for using the gym. Counterfeit, made to look like something real in order to trick people, especially money or documents. He was arrested for making counterfeit passports. To get fooled by counterfeit money. To be deceived or cheated by money that is not real, but looks like it. She got fooled by counterfeit money when she bought something from a street vendor. A cash point. Another term for ATM. A device that allows you to withdraw cash from your bank account using a card and a pin code. He forgot his card at the cash point. A branch. A local office or shop of a bank or a company. She visited the branch of her bank to open a new account. An overdraft. An amount of money that you owe to a bank when you have spent more money than you have in your account. He had an overdraft of 500 euros on his account. Bookkeeping. The activity of recording the money that is spent and received by a business or an organization. She does the bookkeeping for her family's restaurant. To be broke. To have no money or very little money. He was broke after losing his job. To issue shares. To make new shares of a company or a business available for people to buy. The company issued shares to raise more capital. To deposit. To put money into a bank account. He deposited 1,000 euros into his account. To owe money. To have to pay money back to someone or something. Because you have borrowed it or because you have not paid for something that you have bought or used. She owes money to her landlord for the rent. 17. Shopping Part 2 News Agent. A store that sells newspapers, magazines, and other items. I bought a magazine at the news agent. Out of stock. Not available to buy because there is none left. I'm sorry. We are out of stock of this product. A patron. A customer or a regular visitor of a store, restaurant, or other place. The patrons of this cafe are very friendly. The after sales service. The help and support that a company provides to customers who have bought its products. The after sales service of this company is excellent. They always answer my questions and solve my problems. A banknote. A piece of paper money. This banknote is worth 50 euros. A bill. 
a statement of how much money you owe for something you have bought or used. Can I have the bill, please? I need to pay for my meal. To charge. To ask someone to pay a certain amount of money for something. How much do you charge for this service? The counter. A long, flat surface where customers are served in a store or a bank. Please go to the counter and give your name and number. Grocery store. A store that sells food and other household items. I need to go to the grocery store and buy some eggs and butter. Outlet. A store that sells goods at lower prices than usual, often because they are made by a well-known company. I bought this jacket at an outlet. It was 50% off. A price tag. A small piece of paper or plastic that shows the price of something. This dress has a price tag of 100 euros. It's too expensive for me. Two, a purchase. To buy something, something that you have bought. I purchased this book online. This book is my latest purchase. Receipt. A piece of paper that shows that you have paid for something. Please keep your receipt. You might need it later. Second hand. Used by someone else before. This car is second hand, but it's still in good condition. Shoplifting. The act of stealing goods from a store. Shoplifting is a crime. You can go to jail for it. Small change. Coins of low value. Do you have any small change for the bus? Voucher. A piece of paper that gives you the right to buy something at a lower price or to get something for free. I have a voucher for a free pizza. Do you want to use it? Wholesale. The business of selling large quantities of goods to other businesses, not to the public. This store sells clothes at wholesale prices. They are very cheap. Worth. The value of something in money or other terms. This painting is worth a million euros. It's very rare. A drugstore. A store that sells medicines, cosmetics, and other items. I need to go to the drugstore and buy some aspirin and soap.
a bakery, a store that sells bread, cakes, and other baked goods. I love the smell of the bakery, it makes me hungry. To fit SB, to be the right size or shape for someone. This shirt fits me perfectly, it's very comfortable. Refund. The act of giving money back to someone who is not satisfied with something they have bought. I want a refund. This product is defective. To replace. To put something new or different in the place of something else. I need to replace the battery of my phone. It's not working well. Loyalty card. A card that gives you benefits such as discounts or free products if you buy regularly from the same store. Do you have a loyalty card? You can earn points and save money. Sales. A period of time when a store sells its goods at lower prices than usual. I love shopping during the sales. I can find a lot of bargains. Shop assistant. A person who works in a store and helps customers. Excuse me. Can you help me? I'm looking for a gift for my friend. Shopping mall. A large building or group of buildings that has many different stores, restaurants, and other facilities. Let's go to the shopping mall. There are many things to do and see there. A supplier. A person or a company that provides goods or services to another business. We need to find a new supplier. The current one is not reliable. Warranty. A written promise by a company to repair or replace a product that breaks or does not work properly within a certain period of time. This laptop has a two-year warranty. If anything goes wrong, they will fix it for free. Window shopping. The activity of looking at the goods in store windows without buying anything. I like window shopping. It's fun to see what's new and fashionable. In cash. Using coins or banknotes to pay for something. Not a credit card or a check. I prefer to pay in cash. It's easier and faster. A check. A piece of paper that you write an amount of money on and sign. And that can be used as money.
I don't have any cash. Can I pay by check? To splurge. To spend a lot of money on something that you do not really need, but that you want to have for pleasure or fun. I splurged on a new dress for the party. It was very expensive but I loved it. To haggle. To argue or negotiate with someone about the price of something, especially in a market where prices are not fixed. I haggled with the vendor and got a good deal on this rug. I paid 20% less than the original price. To browse. To look at a variety of things in a store or a website without having a specific intention to buy anything. I like to browse online shops when I'm bored. Sometimes I find something interesting. To impulse buy. To buy something without planning or thinking carefully. Usually because you see something you like and you want it immediately. I regret buying this hat. It was an impulse buy and I don't really need it. To window shop. To look at the goods in store windows without buying anything, just for fun or to see what is available. I enjoy window shopping on weekends. It's relaxing and entertaining. To shoplift. To steal goods from a store by hiding them in your clothes or bag. He was caught shoplifting a pair of sunglasses. He had to pay a fine and do community service. To rip off. To charge someone too much money for something, or to cheat someone. This taxi driver ripped me off. He charged me twice the normal fare. To bargain hunt. To look for the best prices or discounts when you are shopping. She loves to bargain hunt. She always finds the cheapest deals and saves a lot of money. To stock up. To buy a large quantity of something that you need or use regularly, so that you do not run out of it. I stocked up on toilet paper and pasta. I don't want to run out of them during the lockdown. To try on. To put on a piece of clothing or a pair of shoes to see if they fit you or if you like them. Can I try on this jacket, please? I want to see if it fits me.
to pay in installments, to pay for something in several small amounts over a period of time, instead of paying the whole amount at once. I can't pay for this TV in full. Can I pay in installments? To get a refund. To get your money back for something that you bought and returned, because you are not happy with it. I got a refund for this book. It was damaged and unreadable. To track, to follow the progress or movement of something, especially online. I can track my package online. It says it's on its way. To rate. To give a score or a comment to something that you bought or used, usually online, to show how good or bad it is. I rated this hotel 5 stars. It was amazing and the service was excellent. Eighteen at the restaurant. A la carte. This means that you can order any dish from the menu without having to choose a fixed set of courses. I prefer to order a la carte because I like to try different dishes. Set menu. This means that you can choose a fixed number of courses usually for a fixed price. The set menu includes a starter, a main course, and a dessert for 25 euros. Appetizers. These are small dishes that are served before the main course, to stimulate your appetite. For appetizers, we have garlic bread, salad, and soup. To bake. This means to cook food in an oven, using dry heat. She baked a delicious chocolate cake for her birthday. A beverage. This is a drink, usually other than water. Would you like a hot or cold beverage with your meal? A china. This is a type of porcelain that is used to make dishes, plates, cups, etc. She collects antique china from different countries. Chopped. This means to cut food into small pieces, usually with a knife. He chopped some onions and garlic for the sauce. To go pear-shaped. This is an informal expression that means to go wrong or fail. Everything was going well until the dessert went pear-shaped and burned in the oven. To clear the table. This means to remove the dishes, cutlery, napkins, etc. from the table after a meal. Could you please help me clear the table? I'll do the dishes later. Cutlery. These are the utensils that are used to eat food, such as knives, forks, spoons, etc. The cutlery is in the drawer next to the sink. Spoilt for choice. This means to have so many good options that it is hard to decide.
The menu is so varied that I'm spoilt for choice. What do you recommend? A dressing. This is a sauce or a mixture of ingredients that is used to add flavor to a salad. I like my salad with a light dressing of olive oil and vinegar. A flavor. This is the taste of something, or the quality that makes it distinctive. This ice cream has a rich vanilla flavor. A guest. This is a person who is invited to a place or an event by another person. We have a guest speaker today, who will talk about his experience as a chef. Helping. This is a portion or a serving of food. Would you like another helping of pasta? There's plenty left. The main course. This is the most important or substantial dish in a meal, usually served after the appetizers and before the dessert. For the main course, I ordered steak and fries. A meal. This is an occasion when food is eaten, usually at a specific time of the day. What did you have for your breakfast meal? A napkin. This is a piece of cloth or paper that is used to wipe the mouth or hands while eating. Don't forget to put a napkin on your lap before you start eating. An oven. This is an appliance that is used to bake, roast, or heat food. Preheat the oven to 180 degrees Celsius before you put the pizza in. A pan. This is a metal container that is used to cook food on a stove, usually with a handle and a lid. Use a large pan to fry the eggs and bacon. A plate. This is a flat and round dish that is used to serve or eat food. Please pass me your plate when you're done eating. Wipe the slate clean. This is an idiomatic expression that means to forget or forgive past mistakes or problems, and start again with a fresh attitude. Let's wipe the slate clean and forget about our argument. We're still friends, right? To pour. This means to transfer a liquid from one container to another, usually by tilting or lifting. Can you pour me some water, please? I'm thirsty. A recipe. This is a set of instructions that tells you how to cook a dish, usually with a list of ingredients and measurements. Do you have a recipe for apple pie? I want to make one for my family. Organic. This means that something is produced or grown without the use of artificial chemicals, pesticides, or hormones. I only buy organic fruits and vegetables, because they are healthier and tastier. I might plump for a fish dish. This means that I might choose or decide to have a fish dish, usually after considering other options. I'm not sure what to order, but I might plump for a fish dish. I heard they have fresh salmon today. A side order. This is a small dish that is served along with the main course, usually as an extra or an option. Do you want a side order of fries or salad with your burger? Silver. 
This is a type of metal that is used to make cutlery, dishes, or other objects. She polished the silver before setting the table for the guests. A. To slice. This is a thin and flat piece of food that is cut from a larger piece, or the action of cutting food in this way. He ate a slice of cheese with his bread. She sliced the cake and served it to the children. Spicy. This means that something has a strong and hot taste, usually from the use of spices or peppers. I love spicy food, but it makes me drink a lot of water. To take away. This means to buy food from a restaurant or a shop and eat it somewhere else, usually at home or at work. I don't have time to cook tonight, so I'll order some pizza to take away. Around the clock. This means all day and all night, without stopping. The restaurant is open around the clock. So you can eat there anytime you want. Complimentary. This means free of charge, or given as a courtesy or a bonus. The hotel offers complimentary breakfast and Wi Fi to its guests. The cloakroom. This is a room or a place where you can leave your coat, bag, or other belongings, usually for a small fee or a tip. You can leave your jacket in the cloakroom, it's too warm inside the restaurant. Give it a whirl. This is an informal expression that means to try something new or different, usually for fun or curiosity. I've never eaten sushi before, but I'll give it a whirl. It looks interesting. Appetizer. This is another word for appetizers, which are small dishes that are served before the main course, to stimulate your appetite. For appetizer, we have garlic bread, salad, and soup. Baked. This is the past tense of to bake, which means to cook food in an oven, using dry heat. She baked a delicious chocolate cake for her birthday. Beverage. This is another word for a beverage, which is a drink, usually other than water. Would you like a hot or cold beverage with your meal? Bill or check. These are words for the document that shows how much you have to pay for the food and drinks that you ordered at a restaurant. Can we have the bill? Check, please. We're ready to pay. Buffet. This is a type of meal where you can serve yourself from a variety of dishes that are displayed on a table or a counter. The hotel has a buffet for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You can eat as much as you want. Condiments. These are substances that are used to add flavor or color to food, such as salt, pepper, ketchup, mustard, etc. The condiments are on the table. You can help yourself. Cutlery. This is another word for cutlery, which are the utensils that are used to eat food, such as knives, forks, spoons, etc. The cutlery is in the drawer next to the sink. Farm to table. This is a movement or a concept that promotes the use of fresh and local ingredients that are directly sourced from farms, without going through intermediaries or processing. The restaurant is famous for its farm-to-table cuisine, which showcases the best of the region's produce.
fried. This means to cook food in hot oil or fat, usually in a pan or a deep fryer. He loves fried chicken, but he knows it's not very healthy, so he only eats it once in a while. Grilled. This means to cook food on a metal rack or a device that has bars, usually over a fire or an electric heat source. She grilled some vegetables and cheese for a healthy snack. Hearty. This means that something is satisfying and filling, usually because it is large or rich. He made a hearty stew with meat and potatoes for the cold winter night. To chip in. This is an informal expression that means to contribute money or help for a common purpose or a shared expense. Let's chip in for the pizza so we can all enjoy it. The quality started to go downhill. This is an idiomatic expression that means to deteriorate or decline in quality, performance, or condition. The restaurant used to be very good, but the quality started to go downhill after they changed the chef. Surf and turf. This is a type of dish that combines seafood and meat, usually lobster and steak. He ordered surf and turf for his anniversary dinner, as a special treat. You're making my mouth water. This is an idiomatic expression that means to make someone feel hungry or eager for something, usually by describing or showing it. You're making my mouth water with your description of the chocolate cake. Can I have a slice? Acidity. This is a term that describes the sourness or tartness of a wine, which is influenced by the amount of acid in the grapes. This wine has a high acidity, which makes it refreshing and crisp. Aeration. This is a process that involves exposing wine to air, which can enhance its flavor and aroma. He poured the wine into a decanter to allow for aeration before serving it. Aging. This is a process that involves storing wine for a period of time, which can improve its quality and complexity. This wine has been aging in oak barrels for 10 years, which gives it a rich and smooth taste. Appellation. This is a term that identifies the geographic origin of a wine, which can indicate its quality and characteristics. This wine has the appellation of Bordeaux, which means it comes from a specific region in France. Aroma. This is a term that describes the smell of a wine, which is influenced by the grapes, the fermentation, and the aging. This wine has a fruity aroma, with hints of apple and pear. Balance. This is a term that describes the harmony and proportion of the elements of a wine, such as acidity, sweetness, alcohol, and tannin. This wine has a good balance, which means it is neither too sour nor too sweet. Barrel. This is a wooden container that is used to store and age wine, which can impart flavor and color to the wine. This wine was aged in new oak barrels, which gives it a vanilla and toast aroma. Blend. This is a term that describes a wine that is made from a mixture of different grape varieties, which can create a more complex and balanced wine. This wine is a blend of Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot, and Malbec, which gives it a full-bodied and fruity flavor. Body. This is a term that describes the weight and texture of a wine, which is influenced by the alcohol, sugar, and tannin content. This wine has a light body, which means it is thin and watery in the mouth. 
bouquet. This is a term that describes the complex and mature aroma of a wine, which is developed by the aging process. This wine has a floral bouquet, with notes of rose and violet. Brut. This is a term that describes a dry sparkling wine, which has very little or no sugar added. This wine is a brut, which means it is not sweet at all. Cellar. This is a place where wine is stored and aged, usually underground or in a cool and dark room. He has a large cellar, where he keeps his collection of fine wines. Connoisseur. This is a term that describes a person who has a lot of knowledge and appreciation of wine, usually based on experience and taste. She is a connoisseur of wine, who can tell the origin and quality of any wine by just smelling it. Palate. This is a term that describes the sense of taste and the ability to distinguish and appreciate flavors. He has a refined palate, which means he can enjoy subtle and complex flavors. Sommelier. This is a term that describes a professional who is trained and knowledgeable in wine, usually working in a restaurant or a wine shop. She is a sommelier, who can advise you on the best wine to pair with your food. 19. The Weathered It's Brass Monkeys. This is a British slang phrase used to describe very cold weather. I need to wear my coat today. It's brass monkeys outside. I had to scrape my windscreen. This phrase is used when someone has to remove ice or frost from their car's windscreen because of cold weather. This morning was so cold. I had to scrape my windscreen before driving. It's blowing a gale. This phrase is used to describe very windy weather. Be careful when you go outside. It's blowing a gale. Pouring down with rain. This phrase is used to describe heavy rainfall. You'll need an umbrella today. It's pouring down with rain. The snow has drifted. This phrase is used when snow has been blown by the wind into a heap. The snow has drifted against the door. We'll need to shovel it away. It's chucking it down. This is a British slang phrase used to describe heavy rain. Take your raincoat, it's chucking it down outside. Hose pipe ban. This is a restriction imposed by water companies to conserve water during droughts. Due to the drought, there's a hose pipe ban in our area. It blows the cobwebs away. This phrase is used to describe something that makes you feel more energetic and happy. A good walk in the fresh air blows the cobwebs away. Floods. This is a natural disaster caused by excessive rainfall or melting snow. The heavy rainfall caused floods in the city. It's a scorcher. This phrase is used to describe a very hot day. Make sure to wear sunscreen. It's a scorcher today. It was sweltering. This phrase is used to describe extremely hot weather. 
It was sweltering yesterday. The temperature reached 40 degrees Celsius. I'm sweating buckets. This phrase is used when someone is sweating a lot due to heat or exercise. After my workout, I was sweating buckets. The drought. This is a period of time when there is not enough rain for plants and crops to grow. The drought has caused a lot of problems for farmers this year. It only snows once in a blue moon. This phrase is used to describe something that happens very rarely. In this city, it only snows once in a blue moon. There's no bad weather. There are just bad clothes. This phrase means that with the right clothing, you can handle any type of weather. Don't worry about the rain. There's no bad weather, there are just bad clothes. After rain comes fair weather. This phrase means that things often improve after a difficult or unpleasant situation. Don't worry about the problems you're facing. Remember, after rain comes fair weather. If bees stay at home, rain will soon come. If they fly away, fine will be the day. This is an old saying used to predict the weather based on the behavior of bees. The bees are staying near their hive today. If bees stay at home, rain will soon come. A warm November is the sign of a bad winter. This phrase means that if November is warmer than usual, the winter will be harsh. It's been a warm November this year, which could be the sign of a bad winter. Rainbow at noon, more rain soon. This phrase is used to predict that if you see a rainbow at noon, it will rain again soon. Look at that rainbow at noon, more rain soon. The higher the clouds, the better the weather. This phrase means that if the clouds are high in the sky, the weather will be good. The clouds are high today, so the higher the clouds, the better the weather. Climate. This is the average weather conditions in a place over a long period of time. The climate in the Sahara Desert is hot and dry. Weather. This refers to the state of the atmosphere at a particular place and time. The weather today is sunny with a high of 25 degrees Celsius. Flood. This is an overflow of a large amount of water beyond its normal limits, especially over what is normally dry land. The heavy rain caused a flood in the town. Drought. This is a prolonged period of abnormally low rainfall, leading to a shortage of water. The drought has lasted for two months now. Famine. This is extreme scarcity of food. The drought led to a famine in the region. Earthquake. This is a sudden and violent shaking of the ground often caused by movement within the Earth's crust. The earthquake caused significant damage to the city. Tsunami. 
This is a long, high sea wave caused by an earthquake or other disturbance. The earthquake in the ocean caused a tsunami. Blizzard. This is a severe snowstorm with high winds. The blizzard made it impossible to see more than a few feet ahead. Squall. This is a sudden, violent gust of wind, often accompanied by rain, snow, or sleet. The squall knocked over several trees. Storm. This is a violent disturbance of the atmosphere with strong winds and usually rain, thunder, lightning, or snow. The storm caused power outages throughout the city. Hail. These are small balls of ice that fall like rain from the sky. The hail damaged the crops. Drizzle. This is light rain falling in very fine drops. There's a slight drizzle outside. Sleet. This is a form of precipitation consisting of ice pellets, often mixed with rain or snow. The sleet made the roads slippery. Frost. This is a thin layer of ice on a solid surface, which forms from water vapor in an above freezing atmosphere coming in contact with a solid surface whose temperature is below freezing. There was frost on the grass this morning. Overcast. This refers to the sky being covered with cloud. The sky is overcast today. Smog. This is a type of air pollution that forms a visible haze in the atmosphere. The city is covered in smog today. Snowfall. This refers to the amount of snow that falls in a particular area in a certain period of time. The snowfall last night was quite heavy. Mudslide. This is a mass of mud and other earthy material that falls down a hillside or slope. The heavy rain caused a mudslide on the mountain. Avalanche. This is a mass of snow, ice, and rocks falling rapidly down a mountainside. An avalanche in the Alps buried a ski resort. Volcanic eruption. This is when a volcano throws out hot, molten rock called magma, gases and ash. The volcanic eruption caused the villages to evacuate. Typhoon. This is a tropical storm in the region of the Indian or Western Pacific Oceans. The typhoon caused a lot of damage to the coastal areas. Monsoon. This is a seasonal prevailing wind in the region of South and Southeast Asia, which brings with it a season of heavy rains. The monsoon season in India starts in June. Tornado. This is a mobile, destructive vortex of violently rotating winds having the appearance of a funnel-shaped cloud. The tornado swept through the town, causing significant damage. Hurricane. 
This is a storm with a violent wind, specifically a tropical cyclone in the Caribbean. The hurricane made landfall in Florida yesterday. Cyclone. This is a system of winds rotating inward to an area of low atmospheric pressure. The cyclone caused heavy rainfall and strong winds. Heat wave. This is a prolonged period of excessively hot weather. The city is experiencing a heat wave with temperatures reaching over 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Snow, snowflakes, these are small, soft, white pieces of ice that fall from the sky when it's cold. The snowflakes are falling gently outside. Temperature, this is a measure of how hot or cold something is. The temperature today is 20 degrees Celsius. Humidity. This is the amount of water vapor in the air. The humidity today is quite high, making it feel hotter than it actually is. Rainfall. This is the amount of rain that falls in a particular area in a particular period of time. The rainfall this month has been above average. Thunderstorm. This is a storm with thunder and lightning and typically also heavy rain or hail. The thunderstorm last night was quite intense. Fog. Mist. This is a thick cloud of tiny water droplets suspended in the atmosphere at or near the Earth's surface that obscures or restricts visibility. The fog this morning made it difficult to see the road. Atmospheric pressure. This is the force exerted by the weight of the atmosphere. Changes in atmospheric pressure can affect the weather. Wind velocity and direction. This refers to the speed and direction of the wind. The wind velocity and direction can greatly affect the temperature. Solar radiation. This is radiant energy emitted by the sun. Solar radiation is a major factor in the Earth's climate. Cloudiness. This refers to the fraction of the sky obscured by clouds when observed from a particular location. The cloudiness can affect the temperature. Storm possibility. This refers to the likelihood of a storm occurring. The storm possibility is high today due to the atmospheric conditions. Tropical storm. This is a localized, very intense low pressure wind system, forming over tropical oceans and with winds of hurricane force. The tropical storm caused heavy rainfall and strong winds. Water vapor. This is the gaseous phase of water. It's an important part of the Earth's weather system. Water vapor in the atmosphere contributes to humidity. Wind chill. This is the perceived decrease in air temperature felt by the body on exposed skin due to the flow of air. 
The wind chill is making it feel colder than it actually is. Air pressure. This is the force exerted onto a surface by the weight of the air. Air pressure changes can often signal a change in the weather. 20 family. Kinship. The relationship between members of the same family. The kinship between them was evident in their shared mannerisms. Lineage. Direct descent from an ancestor. She's proud of her royal lineage. Progeny. A descendant or the descendants of a person, animal, or plant. He was surrounded by his numerous progeny. Ancestry. One's family or ethnic descent. He was proud of his Irish ancestry. Patriarch, matriarch, the male, female head of a family. My grandfather was the patriarch of our family. Nuclear, extended family, your immediate family, nuclear, or your family including aunts, uncles, and grandparents, extended. We're having a reunion with our extended family. Maternal, paternal, related through the mother's, maternal, or father's, paternal, side of the family. He inherited the house from his paternal grandmother. Sibling rivalry. Competition between siblings. Sibling rivalry was common in their household. Black sheep of the family. A family member who is considered a disgrace. He's always been the black sheep of the family. Ties that bind, the relationships and connections within a family. The ties that bind us are strong. Family tree, a diagram showing the relationships between people in several generations of a family. She traced her ancestry through her family tree. Generation gap. Differences of outlook or opinion between people of different generations. There's a real generation gap between my parents and me. Domestic bliss. A happy and peaceful home life. They enjoyed their domestic bliss. Skeletons in the closet. Disgraceful or embarrassing family secrets. Every family has a few skeletons in the closet. Blood is thicker than water. Family relationships are stronger than relationships with other people.
In times of crisis, we remember that blood is thicker than water. Festive gathering. A family gathering to celebrate a holiday or special occasion. The festive gathering was full of joy and laughter. Family feud. A lasting conflict between family members. The family feud started over a misunderstanding. Estranged. No longer close or affectionate to someone. Alienated. He is estranged from his family. Inheritance. Something that is or may be inherited. The siblings fought over their father's inheritance. Line of descent. The genealogical relationship between an individual and the individual's progenitors. The line of descent can be traced back to the 16th century. Ancestral home. The home or region where your ancestors originally came from. She visited her ancestral home in Italy. Descendants. People who are the offspring of a certain ancestor or family. He has many descendants spread across the country. Family heirloom. A valuable object that has been given by older members of a family to younger members of the same family over many years. The necklace is a family heirloom. Passed down through generations. Next of kin. Your closest living relative or relatives. In case of any emergency. Please contact my next of kin. Baptism. Christening. A Christian sacrament of initiation and adoption. We're attending the christening of my niece this Sunday. Bar Mitzvah, Bat Mitzvah, Jewish ceremonies for boys and girls reaching the age of maturity. His Bar Mitzvah will take place next month. Wedding anniversary. The date a wedding took place in a previous year. They're celebrating their 50th wedding anniversary. Baby shower. A party to celebrate the expected birth of a baby. I'm hosting a baby shower for my sister. Family strife. Trouble or disagreement between family members. Family strife can often lead to stress. Estrangement. Being no longer close or affectionate to someone. Alienated. He has been in estrangement from his family for years. In laws, relatives by marriage. My in laws are coming to visit us next week.
adoption the act of legally taking another's child and bringing it up as one's own they're considering adoption single parent a person bringing up a child or children without a partner she's a single parent with two kids step family a family where at least one parent has children from a previous relationship that are not genetically related to the other parent They've become a step family after the marriage. Guardian, a person who looks after and is legally responsible for someone who is unable to manage their own affairs. Her aunt became her guardian after her parents passed away. Twins two children born to the same mother at the same birth my brother and i are twins triplets three children born to the same mother at the same birth the triplets are starting school this year siblings brothers or sisters i have 3 siblings generation all of the people born and living at about the same time there are 3 generations living in our house ancestor a person typically one more remote than a grandparent from whom one is descended my ancestors came from europe godparents these are the people who promise to take care of a child if the child's parents cannot My godparents always send me a gift on my birthday. Family connections. These are the relationships between various members of a family. Her family connections helped her get a job at the company. You've got a houseful this phrase is used when someone's house is full of people. With all the relatives visiting for the holidays, you've got a houseful. In laws, these are your relatives by marriage. My in laws are coming to visit us next week. To get a lot on his plate, this phrase means that someone has a lot of work or problems to deal with. He's got a lot on his plate right now with the new project at work. To be laid up, this phrase means to be unable to leave your bed or house especially because you're ill. She's been laid up with the flu for a week. She's been in the wars a bit. This phrase is used when someone has had a lot of problems or difficulties recently. She's been in the wars a bit lately, with her car breaking down and then her basement flooding. My poor dad's at his wit's end. 
This phrase means that someone is so worried, confused, or annoyed that they do not know what to do next. My poor dad's at his wit's end trying to deal with all the paperwork. 21. Christmas. Merry Christmas. This is a greeting used during the Christmas season to wish joy and happiness. Merry Christmas. May your day be filled with joy and laughter. Happy New Year. This is a greeting used to wish someone a prosperous and joyful New Year. Happy New Year. May this year bring you happiness and success. Wishing you a prosperous New Year. This is a phrase used to wish someone success and wealth in the new year. Wishing you a prosperous new year filled with health and happiness. All the best for the coming year. This is a phrase used to wish someone all the best for the upcoming year. All the best for the coming year. May it be filled with joy and success. Season's greetings. This is a greeting used during the holiday season. Season's greetings. May your holidays be merry and bright. Advent. This is the period of four weeks before Christmas in Christianity. The Advent season is a time of preparation for the celebration of the birth of Jesus. Angel. In the context of Christmas, an angel is a spiritual being believed to act as a messenger of God. An angel told Mary that she would give birth to Jesus. Berry. A small round fruit. Holly berries are often associated with Christmas. The holly berries add a pop of color to the Christmas wreath. Candle. A stick made of wax with a wick in the middle, which is lit to produce light. We light a candle every night during Advent. Chimney. A vertical pipe in a house that allows smoke and gases to escape from a fireplace. Children believe that Santa Claus enters the house through the chimney. Christianity. A religion based on the life and teachings of Jesus Christ. Christmas is a significant holiday in Christianity as it celebrates the birth of Jesus Christ. Christmas cake. A type of fruitcake served at Christmas time in many countries. My grandmother makes the best Christmas cake. It's a family tradition. Christmas card. A greeting card sent as part of the traditional celebration of Christmas. I'm sending out Christmas cards to all my friends and family. Christmas carol. A song or hymn whose lyrics are on the theme of Christmas. 
My favorite Christmas carol is Silent Night. Christmas Day, the day on which the birth of Jesus Christ is celebrated, traditionally on December 25th. On Christmas Day, we open presents and have a big family dinner. Christmas Eve, the evening or day before Christmas Day. On Christmas Eve, we go to church and then have a big family meal. Christmas holidays, the holiday period around Christmas. I'm visiting my grandparents during the Christmas holidays. Christmas present, a gift given at Christmas. I got a new bike as a Christmas present. Christmas tree. A decorated tree, usually an evergreen conifer, such as a spruce, pine, or fir, or an artificial tree of similar appearance, associated with the celebration of Christmas. We decorate our Christmas tree with lights and ornaments. Christmas music's on a loop. This means that Christmas music is being played continuously. In our house, Christmas music's on a loop throughout the holiday season. Cracker. A decorated paper tube that makes a sharp noise, crack, when pulled apart, used in British celebrations at Christmas. Each place setting at the dinner table had a Christmas cracker. Decoration. An ornament or embellishment used to make something look more attractive, especially during the holidays. We put up the Christmas decorations the day after Thanksgiving. Eggnog. A traditional Christmas drink made from a mixture of beaten eggs, cream, and, often, a spirit such as brandy or rum. My uncle makes the best eggnog. It's rich and creamy. Father Christmas. The personification of Christmas as a benevolent old man with a flowing white beard, dressed in a red suit trimmed with white, who brings gifts to good children on Christmas Eve, also known as Santa Claus. The children left out cookies and milk for Father Christmas. Fireplace. A space in a room where a fire can be lit. We hang our stockings on the fireplace for Father Christmas to fill. Frankincense. An aromatic gum resin obtained from African and Asian trees and used in incense and perfumes. It was one of the gifts, along with gold and myrrh, that the three Magi presented to Jesus. The Magi brought gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh to Jesus. Gold. A precious yellow metallic element, highly malleable and ductile, and not subject to oxidation or corrosion. It was one of the gifts that the three Magi presented to Jesus. Gold was one of the gifts given to Jesus by the Magi. Holly. An evergreen plant with bright red berries, used in Christmas decorations. 
We decorate our house with holly for Christmas. Jesus. In Christianity, Jesus is believed to be the Son of God and the Messiah. Christmas celebrates his birth. Christians celebrate the birth of Jesus on Christmas Day. Joseph. In the Christian religion, Joseph is the husband of Mary, the mother of Jesus. Joseph was told in a dream that Mary would give birth to Jesus. Maggie. The Maggie were the wise men from the East who brought gifts to the baby Jesus. The Maggie followed a star to find the baby Jesus. Manger. A trough or box in a stable or barn, from which horses or cattle eat. In the Christian religion, it's the place where Jesus was laid after his birth. In many homes, a manger scene is displayed during Christmas. It's turkey and all the trimmings. This means a traditional Christmas meal of turkey with all the additional dishes such as stuffing, cranberry sauce, and vegetables. For Christmas dinner, it's turkey and all the trimmings. Huge blowout. This means a large or extravagant celebration. Our family Christmas party is always a huge blowout. Bubbly. This is a colloquial term for champagne. We toast the new year with a glass of bubbly. Boxing Day. A public holiday celebrated on the day after Christmas Day. It originated in the UK and is celebrated in a number of countries that previously formed part of the British Empire. On Boxing Day, we usually go for a long walk to burn off some of the Christmas calories. Pigs in blankets. A traditional Christmas dish in the UK. It consists of small sausages wrapped in bacon. I always look forward to my mom's pigs in blankets at Christmas. A stodgy dessert. This refers to a heavy, rich, and often sweet dish that is served at the end of a meal. After the main course, we had a stodgy dessert of Christmas pudding. It's a symbol of warmth and togetherness. This means it represents feelings of warmth, comfort, and unity. The fireplace is lit on Christmas Eve. It's a symbol of warmth and togetherness. Holly berries, the red berries produced by a holly plant. The holly berries add a festive touch to the Christmas wreath. Eggnog, a traditional Christmas drink made from a mixture of beaten eggs, cream, and, often, a spirit such as brandy or rum. We always have eggnog at our Christmas party. A manger scene with figures of Jesus. This refers to a nativity scene, a special exhibition depicting the birth of Jesus.
we set up a manger scene with figures of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. A real treat. This means something that is particularly pleasing or enjoyable. The Christmas carol concert was a real treat. Leftovers. Food remaining after a meal. We had turkey sandwiches made from the leftovers the next day. Thoughtful gifts. Gifts that have been chosen or made with care and consideration for the recipient's tastes and interests. My sister always gives the most thoughtful gifts. Bittersweet. This refers to something that has both pleasant and sad or nostalgic aspects. Saying goodbye after the Christmas holidays is always bittersweet. Cracker game. A game played with a Christmas cracker, a decorated paper tube that makes a small bang when pulled apart. We always play the cracker game at our Christmas dinner. Trinket. A small ornament or item of jewelry that is of little value. I found a small trinket in my Christmas cracker. Twenty Suka New Year. New Year's Day, the first day of the year. We celebrate New Year's Day on January 1st. New Year's Eve, the last day of the year. We usually stay up late on New Year's Eve to watch the fireworks. Countdown. The act of counting backwards to zero, especially to mark the start of a new year. We started the countdown to midnight at 11.59 p.m. Fireworks. Explosive devices that produce bright colors and loud noises in the sky. We watched the fireworks display over the city center. Champagne. A type of sparkling wine that is often used to celebrate special occasions. We toasted to the new year with a glass of champagne. Party. A social gathering of people who come together to celebrate something. We're having a New Year's party at our house tonight. Celebration. An event or activity that is held to mark a special occasion. The city center is hosting a New Year's celebration with live music and food. Resolutions. Decisions to make a positive change in one's life in the coming year. My New Year's resolution is to exercise more and eat healthier. Midnight. The middle of the night. 12 o'clock at night. We kissed at midnight to ring in the new year. Confetti. Small pieces of colored paper that are thrown during celebrations. We threw confetti in the air to celebrate the new year. Streamers. Long, narrow pieces of colored paper or plastic that are hung up for decoration. We decorated the room with streamers and balloons. Balloons. 
inflatable objects made of rubber or plastic that are often used for decoration. We blew up balloons for the New Year's party. Kiss. To touch one's lips to another person's lips as a sign of affection or greeting. We kissed at midnight to celebrate the new year. Toast. A ritual in which people raise their glasses and drink to honor someone or something. Let's make a toast to the new year. Auld Lang Syne. A traditional song that is often sung on New Year's Eve. We sang Auld Lang Syne as the clock struck midnight. Lucky. Having good fortune or success. I feel lucky to have such great friends and family. Fortune. Good luck or success. I hope the new year brings you good fortune and happiness. Prosperity. The state of being successful or thriving, especially financially. I wish you prosperity and abundance in the new year. Good luck. Best wishes for success or good fortune. Good luck on your New Year's resolutions. Tradition. A custom or belief that has been passed down from generation to generation. It's a tradition in our family to watch the fireworks on New Year's Eve. Custom. A practice or tradition that is common in a particular culture or group. Eating black-eyed peas on New Year's Day is a custom in the southern United States. Superstition. A belief or practice that is not based on reason or scientific knowledge. Some people believe that wearing red underwear on New Year's Eve brings good luck. Black-eyed peas. A type of bean that is often eaten on New Year's Day in the southern United States for good luck. We're making black-eyed peas for dinner on New Year's Day. Hoppin' John. A traditional southern dish made with black-eyed peas, rice, and pork that is often eaten on New Year's Day for good luck. We're having Hop and John for lunch on New Year's Day. Cotecchino con lenticci. A traditional Italian dish made with sausage and lentils that is often eaten on New Year's Day for good luck. We're making Cotecchino con lenticci for dinner on New Year's Day. Zampone. A traditional Italian dish made with stuffed pig's trotter that is often eaten on New Year's Day for good luck. We're having zampone for lunch on New Year's Day. Osechi. A traditional Japanese meal that is eaten on New Year's Day. We're having osechi for breakfast on New Year's Day. Toshikoshi soba. A type of noodle soup that is often eaten on New Year's Eve in Japan to symbolize longevity. We're making Toshikoshi soba for dinner on New Year's Eve. Red underwear. Wearing red underwear on New Year's Eve is believed to bring good luck in some cultures. I'm wearing red underwear tonight for good luck. First footing. 
a Scottish tradition where the first person to enter a home after midnight on New Year's Eve brings good luck for the coming year. We're going first footing at our neighbor's house tonight. New Year's Kiss Kissing someone at midnight on New Year's Eve is a common tradition in many cultures. I'm going to give my partner a New Year's kiss at midnight. Watch night service. A religious service held on New Year's Eve to give thanks for the past year and pray for the coming year. We're going to a watch night service at our church tonight. New Year's baby. A symbol of the new year in many cultures, often depicted as a baby wearing a diaper and a sash. We're going to dress our baby up as a New Year's baby for the party. New Year's resolution. A decision to make a positive change in one's life in the coming year. My New Year's resolution is to read more books this year. New Year's party. A social gathering of people who come together to celebrate the new year. We're hosting a New Year's party at our house tonight. New Year's Eve party. A social gathering of people who come together to celebrate New Year's Eve. We're going to a New Year's Eve party at our friend's house. New Year's Eve ball. A formal dance or party held on New Year's Eve. We're going to a New Year's Eve ball at the hotel downtown. New Year's Eve fireworks. Explosive devices that produce bright colors and loud noises in the sky, often used to celebrate New Year's Eve. We're going to watch the New Year's Eve fireworks display over the city center. New Year's Eve countdown. The act of counting backwards to zero, especially to mark the start of the new year. We're going to start the New Year's Eve countdown at 11.59 p.m. New Year's Eve celebration. An event or activity held to celebrate New Year's Eve. The city center is hosting a New Year's Eve celebration with live music and food. New Year's Day Parade. A parade held on New Year's Day to celebrate the start of the new year. We're going to watch the New Year's Day Parade downtown. Twenty-three. Artificial Intelligence. Algorithm. A set of instructions that a computer program follows to complete a task. The algorithm used by the search engine is designed to provide the most relevant results to the user. Artificial intelligence. The simulation of human intelligence in machines that are programmed to think and learn like humans. Artificial intelligence is being used to develop self-driving cars. Backpropagation. A technique used in machine learning to train artificial neural networks. Backpropagation is a popular method for training deep neural networks. Big data. Extremely large data sets that can be analyzed to reveal patterns, trends, and associations. Big data analytics can help businesses make better decisions. Chatbot. A computer program designed to simulate conversation with human users, 
especially over the Internet. The chatbot was able to answer all of my questions. Clustering. A technique used in machine learning to group similar data points together. Clustering is often used in data mining to identify patterns in large data sets. Cognitive computing, a field of computer science that focuses on creating intelligent machines that can think and learn like humans. Cognitive computing is being used to develop robots that can interact with humans. Convolutional neural network, a type of artificial neural network that is commonly used in image recognition and processing. Convolutional neural networks are used in self-driving cars to help them recognize objects on the road. Data mining, the process of discovering patterns in large data sets using statistical and computational methods. Data mining is used to identify patterns in customer behavior. Deep learning. A subset of machine learning that involves training artificial neural networks with large amounts of data. Deep learning is used in speech recognition and natural language processing. Decision tree. A decision support tool that uses a tree-like graph to model decisions and their possible consequences. A decision tree can help you make better decisions by mapping out all possible outcomes. Expert system. A computer program that uses artificial intelligence to solve problems in a specific domain. An expert system can help doctors diagnose diseases more accurately. Fuzzy logic. A mathematical logic that allows for approximate reasoning. Fuzzy logic is used in artificial intelligence to deal with uncertainty. Genetic algorithm. A search heuristic that is inspired by the process of natural selection. Genetic algorithms are used in optimization problems to find the best solution. Heuristic. A problem-solving approach that uses practical methods to find solutions that are not guaranteed to be optimal. A heuristic algorithm can find a good solution to a problem quickly. Image recognition. The ability of a computer to identify objects, people, places, and other items in digital images. Image recognition is used in security systems to identify people. Intelligent agent. A computer program that can perform tasks on behalf of a user or other program. An intelligent agent can help you find the best deals online. Knowledge representation. The process of representing knowledge in a way that can be used by a computer program. Knowledge representation is used in expert systems to solve problems. Logic programming. A programming paradigm that uses logic to express facts and rules about a problem domain. 
Logic programming is used in artificial intelligence to solve complex problems. Machine learning — a subset of artificial intelligence that involves training machines to learn from data. Machine learning is used in fraud detection and credit scoring. Natural language processing — the ability of a computer to understand, interpret, and generate human language. Natural language processing is used in chatbots to simulate human conversation. Neural network — a computer system modeled on the human brain and nervous system. Neural networks are used in image recognition and speech recognition. Ontology — a formal representation of knowledge that describes the concepts and relationships within a domain. Ontologies are used in semantic web applications to improve search results. Perceptron — a type of artificial neural network that is used in supervised learning. A perceptron can be used to classify data into different categories. Predictive analytics — the use of statistical algorithms and machine learning techniques to identify the likelihood of future outcomes based on historical data. Predictive analytics is used in marketing to identify potential customers. Probabilistic reasoning — a type of reasoning that deals with uncertainty and probability. Probabilistic reasoning is used in artificial intelligence to make decisions under uncertainty. Reinforcement learning — a type of machine learning that involves training an agent to make decisions based on rewards and punishments. The robot was able to learn how to navigate through a maze using reinforcement learning. Robotics — the branch of engineering that deals with the design, construction, and operation of robots. Robotics is used in the automotive industry to assemble cars. Semi-supervised learning — a type of machine learning that uses both labeled and unlabeled data to train a model. Semi-supervised learning is used to classify emails as spam or non-spam. Sentiment analysis — the analysis of opinions, feelings, and emotions expressed in text. Sentiment analysis is used to measure customer satisfaction. Supervised learning — a type of machine learning that uses labeled data to train a model. Supervised learning is used to predict house prices. Support Vector Machine — a machine learning algorithm used for classification and regression. Support Vector Machines are used to classify images. Swarm Intelligence — the study of collective behavior in social organisms. Swarm intelligence is used to solve complex problems. Unsupervised learning 
a type of machine learning that uses unlabeled data to train a model. Unsupervised learning is used to cluster customers based on their buying habits. Virtual Assistant A computer program designed to perform tasks for the user. Virtual assistants are used to schedule appointments and send emails. Weak AI An artificial intelligence that is designed to perform a specific task. Chatbots are an example of weak AI. Artificial Neural Network A network of artificial neurons that is used for pattern recognition and machine learning. Artificial neural networks are used for image recognition. Backpropagation, a technique used in machine learning to train artificial neural networks. Backpropagation is a popular method for training deep neural networks. Convolutional neural network, a type of artificial neural network that is commonly used in image recognition and processing. Convolutional neural networks are used in self-driving cars to help them recognize objects on the road. Deep learning. A subset of machine learning that involves training artificial neural networks with large amounts of data. Deep learning is used in speech recognition and natural language processing. Decision tree. A decision support tool that uses a tree-like graph to model decisions and their possible consequences. A decision tree can help you make better decisions by mapping out all possible outcomes. Expert system. A computer program that uses artificial intelligence to solve problems in a specific domain. An expert system can help doctors diagnose diseases more accurately. Fuzzy logic. A mathematical logic that allows for approximate reasoning. Fuzzy logic is used in artificial intelligence to deal with uncertainty. Genetic algorithm, a search heuristic that is inspired by the process of natural selection. Genetic algorithms are used in optimization problems to find the best solution. Heuristic, a problem-solving approach that uses practical methods to find solutions that are not guaranteed to be optimal. A heuristic algorithm can find a good solution to a problem quickly. Image recognition. The ability of a computer to identify objects, people, places, and other items in digital images. Image recognition is used in security systems to identify people. Intelligent Agent. A computer program that can perform tasks on behalf of a user or other program. An intelligent agent can help you find the best deals online. Knowledge Representation. The process of representing knowledge in a way that can be used by a computer program. 
Knowledge representation is used in expert systems to solve problems. Logic programming — a programming paradigm that uses logic to express facts and rules about a problem domain. Logic programming is used in artificial intelligence to solve complex problems. Machine learning — a subset of artificial intelligence that involves training machines to learn from data. Machine learning is used in fraud detection and credit scoring. Twenty-four, global inequalities. Inequality, the state of being unequal in status, rights, opportunities, or distribution of resources. Example, the government is committed to reducing inequality in society. Glaring, gross inequalities, inequalities that are obvious, striking, or offensive. Example, there are glaring inequalities in the distribution of wealth in this country. Poverty, the state of being extremely poor. Example, the poverty rate in this region has been increasing over the past decade. To bridge, to narrow the gap, to reduce the difference between two things. Example, the government has launched several initiatives to bridge the gap between the rich and the poor. Wealth disparity. The difference in wealth between different groups of people. Example. The wealth disparity between the top 1% and the bottom 50% of the population is staggering. Inequality of opportunity. The unequal distribution of opportunities based on factors such as race, gender, or socioeconomic status. Example. The company is committed to promoting diversity and reducing inequality of opportunity in the workplace. Discrimination. The unjust or prejudicial treatment of different categories of people, especially on the grounds of race, age, or sex. Example. Discrimination against women in the workplace is still a major problem. To tackle inequalities. To address or deal with inequalities. Example. The government has launched a new program to tackle inequalities in education. Marginalization. The process of pushing a particular group or individual to the edge of society by limiting their access to resources or opportunities. Example. The marginalized communities in this region have been neglected by the government for far too long. Disparity. A great difference or inequality. Example. 
there is a huge disparity in the quality of health care between urban and rural areas. Social justice – the fair and equitable distribution of resources and opportunities in society. Example – the organization is dedicated to promoting social justice and equality for all. Underprivileged People who are disadvantaged or lack the resources and opportunities that others have. Example. The organization provides support and resources to underprivileged children in the community. Gender inequality. The unequal treatment or perception of individuals based on their gender. Example. Gender inequality is a major issue in many parts of the world. Racial disparities. Differences in outcomes or opportunities based on race. Example. There are significant racial disparities in access to health care in this country. To bridge the social divide. To reduce the differences between different groups of people in society. Example. The government has launched several initiatives to bridge the social divide between different ethnic groups. Economic disadvantage. The state of being economically disadvantaged or lacking resources. Example. The economic disadvantage faced by many families in this region is a major concern. Access to education. The ability to obtain an education or access educational resources. Example. The organization is dedicated to improving access to education for underprivileged children. To raise inheritance taxes. To increase the taxes paid on inherited wealth. Example. The government is considering raising inheritance taxes to reduce wealth disparity. Income disparity. The difference in income between different groups of people. Example. The income disparity between the top 1% and the bottom 50% of the population is staggering. A better distribution of wealth. A more equitable distribution of resources and opportunities in society. Example. The organization is dedicated to promoting a better distribution of wealth and reducing poverty. Social mobility. The ability of individuals or families to move up or down the social ladder based on their own efforts or circumstances. Example. Social mobility has been declining in this country over the past few decades. Living wage. A wage that is sufficient to cover the basic needs of an individual or family. Example. 
The organization is advocating for a living wage for all workers. Class divide. The differences between different social classes in society. Example. The class divide in this country is becoming increasingly pronounced. Food insecurity. The state of being without reliable access to a sufficient quantity of affordable, nutritious food. Example. Food insecurity is a major problem in many parts of the world. Health disparities. Differences in health outcomes are access to healthcare based on factors such as race, gender, or socioeconomic status. Example. There are significant health disparities between different communities in this region. Global poverty. Poverty that affects people around the world. Example, the organization is dedicated to fighting global poverty and promoting economic development in developing countries. Urban versus rural disparities, differences in outcomes or opportunities between urban and rural areas. Example, there are significant disparities in access to health care between urban and rural areas. Child labor. The employment of children in any work that deprives them of their childhood, interferes with their ability to attend regular school, or is mentally, physically, socially, or morally harmful. Example. Child labor is a major problem in many parts of the world. Housing inequality. The unequal distribution of housing resources and opportunities. Example. Housing inequality is a major issue in many urban areas around the world. Human rights violations. Actions that violate the basic rights and freedoms to which all humans are entitled. Example. Human rights violations are a major concern in many parts of the world. Exploitation. The action or fact of treating someone unfairly in order to benefit from their work. Example. The company was accused of exploitation and underpaying its workers. Minimum wage. The lowest wage that an employer is legally required to pay to their employees. Example. The government has raised the minimum wage to help reduce poverty and inequality. Economic oppression. The use of economic power to control or exploit others. Example. Economic oppression is a major issue in many developing countries. Social exclusion. The process of excluding individuals or groups from full participation in society.
example, social exclusion is a major problem for many marginalized communities. Educational disparities Differences in educational outcomes or opportunities based on factors such as race, gender, or socioeconomic status. Example, there are significant educational disparities between different communities in this region. Debt cycle, the cycle of borrowing money to pay off existing debts, leading to further debt and financial instability. Example, many families are trapped in a debt cycle that is difficult to escape. Globalization, the process by which businesses or other organizations develop international influence or start operating on an international scale. Example, globalization has led to increased economic growth and cultural exchange around the world. Twenty-five British Monarchy. Symbol of continuity. Imagine a long rope connecting past, present, and future. The Queen's reign stands as a powerful symbol of continuity, bridging the gap between centuries. Abdication crisis. Picture a dramatic royal soap opera. This is a period of intense public debate and upheaval surrounding a monarch's decision to step down. The abdication crisis of Edward VIII plunged the nation into a whirlwind of controversy and romance. Controversy and romance. Think juicy headlines and whispers of forbidden love. These terms highlight the drama and public fascination surrounding some royal events. Princess Diana's life intertwined with controversy and romance, captivating the world's attention. The Crown not just a fancy hat. The crown represents the monarchy's authority and power, often adorned with jewels and symbolism. The queen gracefully received dignitaries, the crown glistening under the palace lights. Buckingham Palace the iconic London residence of the British monarch, serving as a symbol of both grandeur and everyday royal life. Crowds gathered outside Buckingham Palace, eager to catch a glimpse of the royal family. Monarch the reigning king or queen, the head honcho of the monarchy. Queen Elizabeth II, a beloved monarch, reigned for a record-breaking 70 years. Sovereign Similar to monarch, but emphasizing the ruler's supreme authority and independence. The sovereign holds the ultimate power, though governed by constitutional limits. Monarchist someone who supports the monarchy and its continuation.
Many monarchists believe the system provides stability and tradition. Sovereignty, the absolute power and independence of a state, often embodied by the monarch. The nation's sovereignty was fiercely defended during times of war. Queen the female monarch, ruling in her own right, not through marriage. Queen Victoria led Britain through an era of immense growth and transformation. King, the male monarch, ruling in his own right, not through marriage. King Henry VIII famously defied the Pope and established the Church of England. Prince, a male member of the royal family, usually the son of the monarch. Prince William, second in line to the throne, dedicates himself to various charitable causes. Princess, a female member of the royal family, usually the daughter of the monarch. Princess Beatrice pursued a successful career in the business world, breaking traditional royal stereotypes. Duke Duchess, high-ranking noble titles often bestowed upon members of the royal family. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle were awarded the titles of Duke and Duchess of Sussex. Marquise Marchioness, noble titles ranking below Duke Duchess but above Earl Count. The Marquis of Bath is known for his eccentric lifestyle and grand estate. Earl Count, noble titles of similar rank used interchangeably in different countries. Lady Mary Crawley from Downton Abbey belonged to the aristocratic family of Earls of Grantham. Countess, the female equivalent of an Earl Count. The Countess of Wessex is a patron of various arts organizations. Baron Baroness, lower-ranking noble titles, still holding certain privileges. Baroness Thatcher, the UK's first female prime minister, hailed from a modest, non-noble background. Peer, a member of the nobility holding a specific rank like duke or baron.
The House of Lords, an upper chamber of Parliament, was originally composed solely of peers. Peerage, the system of ranking and titles within the nobility. The peerage system has undergone significant reforms in recent times. Lord Lady Titles used to address people of noble rank, depending on their specific title. My Lord addressed the lawyer to the Duke, bowing respectfully. Squire. Historically, a young nobleman attending and assisting a knight. Young Arthur served as a squire to the renowned knight, learning the codes of chivalry. Heir to the throne, the person next in line to succeed the monarch upon their death or abdication. Prince William is currently the heir to the throne of the United Kingdom. Heiress, a female heir apparent whose position as successor cannot be changed by the birth of other children. Queen Elizabeth I, with no sons, paved the way for female heirs like her cousin, Mary Queen of Scots. By divine right, the historical belief that monarchs receive their authority directly from God making them untouchable by human laws. Though no longer widely held, the concept of by divine right once solidified absolute royal power. Crown the physical crown adorned with jewels, symbolizing the monarchy and the monarch's authority. The queen gracefully wore the crown during the coronation ceremony, signifying her reign. Throne the symbolic seat of the monarch, representing their power and position. King Charles III sat firmly on the throne, addressing the nation on his first day as monarch. Scepter, a ceremonial staff carried by the monarch, another symbol of their authority and power. The queen raised the scepter during the coronation oath, signifying her commitment to her duties. Successor, the person who takes over the role of monarch after the current one's reign ends. Prince William is seen as the likely successor to King Charles III, continuing the royal lineage. Ascend the throne. To formally become the new monarch, taking on the official position.
Charles ascended the throne in 2023, following the passing of his mother, Queen Elizabeth II. Accession to the throne, the official start of a new monarch's reign, marked by ceremonies and pronouncements. The Queen's accession to the throne in 1952 ushered in a new era of British monarchy. Coronation a grand ceremony where the new monarch is officially crowned, often involving religious and symbolic elements. The coronation of Queen Elizabeth II was a televised spectacle watched by millions around the world. Reign the period of time during which a monarch rules. Queen Victoria's long reign, spanning over 63 years, marked a significant period in British history. Abdication the act of a monarch voluntarily stepping down from their position. King Edward III famously abdicated in 1936, causing a constitutional crisis. Deposition, the forced removal of a monarch from their position often through violence or revolution. The French Revolution led to the deposition of King Louis the Sakin tanks and the end of absolute monarchy. Nobility, the highest social class traditionally consisting of peers with hereditary titles and privileges. The Duke and Duchess of Cambridge belong to the British nobility, holding titles passed down through generations. Aristocracy, similar to nobility, but emphasizing the wealth, power, and influence of the upper class. The rise of the Industrial Revolution challenged the dominance of the traditional aristocracy. Aristocrat, a member of the aristocracy. Jane Austen's novels often explored the lives and customs of English aristocrats. Courtier, a person who holds a position within the royal household attending to the monarch and their family. The courtiers advised the king on matters of state and ensured the smooth running of the royal household. Royal prerogative, certain powers and privileges held by the monarch, separate from those of parliament. The queen used her royal prerogative to dissolve parliament and call for new elections. Changing of the Guards, a public ceremony where the guards on duty at royal residences are formally replaced.
The changing of the guard at Buckingham Palace is a popular tourist attraction, showcasing the tradition and pageantry of the monarchy. Queen's Speech, an annual address delivered by the monarch to Parliament, outlining the government's agenda. The Queen's Speech is a significant event, setting the tone for the upcoming parliamentary session. Symbolize to represent something larger or more abstract through an object, action, or event. The crown symbolizes the monarchy's long history and enduring power. Scandal, a public controversy involving members of the royal family often concerning their personal lives. The recent royal scandal has tarnished the public image of the monarchy. Regal having or demonstrating dignity, grace, and majesty associated with royalty. Phrase, Queen Elizabeth II always carried herself with a regal air, inspiring respect and admiration. Twenty-six, Olympic Games, Cheering for my country. This means supporting or encouraging the athletes or teams that represent one's nation in a sport event. I was cheering for my country when they won the gold medal in soccer. What they were like in ancient times. This means how something or someone was in the past, especially in a very old period of history. I wonder what they were like in ancient times, when they lived in caves and hunted animals. They originated in ancient Greece. This means they started or came from a region in southeastern Europe that was the cradle of Western civilization and culture thousands of years ago. The Olympic Games originated in ancient Greece and were part of a religious festival. They were held every four years in Olympia. This means they took place or occurred regularly at an interval of four years in a sacred site in the Peloponnese where the ancient Olympic Games were held. They were held every four years in Olympia until they were banned by the Roman Emperor in 393 AD. To be allowed to attend, this means to have the permission or right to go to or be present at something. Only men, boys, and unmarried girls were allowed to attend the ancient Olympic Games. Married women were barred and could be thrown off a mountain if they sneaked in. This means married women were prohibited or forbidden from entering or participating in something, and they could face a severe punishment or death if they tried to do so secretly or without permission. Married women were barred and could be thrown off a mountain if they sneaked in the ancient Olympic Games because they were considered impure and disrespectful to the gods. That's harsh. 
this means that's cruel, unfair, or severe. That's harsh. How can they treat her like that? The winners received olive wreaths. This means the winners or champions of a competition or contest were given or awarded a circular band made of olive branches, which symbolized victory and honor. The winners received olive wreaths and were celebrated as heroes in their hometowns. Pagan festivals. This means religious or cultural celebrations that are not related to or based on the main or dominant religions of the world, such as Christianity, Islam, or Judaism. The ancient Olympic Games were pagan festivals that honored Zeus, the king of the gods in Greek mythology. Cheating. This means breaking the rules or being dishonest in order to gain an advantage or benefit in something. He was caught cheating on the exam and was expelled from school. Using banned substances and tampering with samples, this means taking or using illegal or prohibited drugs or chemicals that enhance one's performance or abilities in a sport, and altering or interfering with the tests or evidence that could detect or prove it. She was accused of using banned substances and tampering with samples, and was stripped of her medals and banned from the sport for life. Gentrification. This means the process or phenomenon of transforming a poor or run-down area into a more affluent or desirable one, often displacing the original residence or changing the character of the place. The Olympic Games have caused gentrification in some parts of the city, where new hotels, stadiums, and shops have replaced old houses, parks, and markets. Olympiad, a period of four years between two consecutive Olympic Games, used to date events in ancient Greece and modern times. The 2024 Summer Olympics in Paris will be the 33rd Olympiad. The 2024 Summer Olympics in Paris will be the 33rd Olympiad. Olympic motto, the official motto of the Olympic Games, which is Sidious Altius Fortius, meaning faster, higher, stronger in Latin. It expresses the spirit of excellence and competition in sports. The Olympic motto inspires athletes to strive for their best and to cooperate with others. Olympic flame, the symbolic flame that is lit at the beginning of the Olympics and burns throughout the duration of the Games. It represents the continuity and connection between the ancient and modern Olympics. Before each edition of the Olympic Games, the flame is lit by the sun's rays during a ceremony held within the ruins of Old Olympia in a ceremony that builds a bridge to the spirit of the ancient Olympic Games. Olympic Anthem, the official musical theme of the Olympic Games, composed by Spiridon Samaras and based on a poem by Costas Palamas. It is played during the opening and closing ceremonies and when the Olympic flag is raised or lowered. The Olympic Anthem was sung by a choir of children from different countries. Olympic Values the core principles and ideals that guide the Olympic movement, which are excellence, friendship, and respect. They promote the positive impact of sports on individuals and society. He demonstrated the Olympic values of excellence, friendship, and respect in his performance and attitude. Olympic Disciplines The subdivisions of sports that have their own events and rules. Swimming is a sport, but freestyle, backstroke, breaststroke, and butterfly are disciplines. 
she competed in three Olympic disciplines, freestyle, backstroke, and medley. Olympic venues, the facilities and locations where the Olympic events and ceremonies take place. They include stadiums, arenas, tracks, pools, courts, fields, and courses. The Olympic venues in Paris are expected to be ready by 224. Olympic symbols, the visual elements that represent the Olympic Games, such as the five interlocking rings, the torch, the flag, the medals, and the mascots. They convey the values and identity of the Olympics. The Olympic symbols convey the values and identity of the Olympics. Twenty seven phrasal verb get get up meaning to rise from a sitting or lying position. Example Every morning, I get up at six AM to start my day. Get something across slash over. Meaning, to successfully communicate or convey information. Example, during the presentation, I struggled to get my point across about the importance of sustainability. Get out of. Meaning, to avoid doing something. Example, he always finds a way to get out of doing household chores. Get around. Meaning, to move from place to place or find a way to overcome obstacles. Example, in a busy city, it's essential to know how to get around using public transportation. Get through to. Meaning, to successfully communicate with someone or make them understand. Example, despite numerous attempts, I couldn't get through to my stubborn neighbor. Get on something. Meaning, to board a vehicle or mode of transportation. Example, let's get on the bus and head downtown. Get about. Meaning, to move around or travel. Example, during summer, we love to get about and explore new places. Get something back. Meaning, to retrieve or recover something that was lost or taken. Example, I need to get my book back from my friend before the library closes. Get back at somebody. Meaning, to seek revenge or retaliate against someone. Example, after the prank, she was determined to get back at her mischievous brother. Get along slash on with somebody. Meaning, to have a good relationship or rapport with someone. Example, despite their differences, Jane and her brother get along quite well. Get back into something. Meaning, to resume an activity or interest after a break. Example, after years away, he decided to get back into playing the guitar. Get over something, difficulty. Meaning, to recover from a challenging situation or emotional distress. 
Example, it took her a long time to get over the loss of her beloved pet. Get away with. Meaning, to escape punishment or consequences for something. Example, he cheated on the exam but somehow managed to get away with it. Get across. Meaning, to successfully convey an idea or message. Example, the teacher used visual aids to help get the concept across to the students. Get ahead. Meaning, to make progress or gain an advantage. Example, she worked hard to get ahead in her career. Get after. Meaning, to scold or reprimand someone. Example, the coach constantly gets after the players to improve their performance. 28. Driving a car. Accelerate. Meaning, to push the accelerator pedal to make a vehicle move faster. When merging onto the highway, remember to accelerate smoothly to match the flow of traffic. Accident. Meaning, when a vehicle hits another vehicle or object, e.g. a tree, a sign, etc. There was a minor accident at the intersection, but thankfully no one was hurt. Ambulance. Meaning, a special vehicle that helps injured people by taking them to the hospital. It uses flashing lights and sound to get other drivers' attention. The ambulance rushed to the scene of the accident to provide medical assistance. Driver's license. Meaning, a driver's license is a legal authorization that permits an individual to operate a motor vehicle. If you operate a vehicle and are pulled over by a law enforcement officer, you will have to show your driver's license. Engine. Meaning, an engine is a machine that uses energy from fuel or steam to produce movement. My car's been having engine trouble recently. Back seat, meaning the seat in the back of a car. My kids love sitting in the back seat during road trips. Back up, meaning to move a vehicle backward. I had to back up to get out of the tight parking spot. Bump, meaning a small raised area on the road surface. Watch out for that bump in the road, it might be uncomfortable. Bumper, meaning the protective bar at the front and back of a vehicle. The bumper of my car got scratched in a parking lot. blinker, meaning a flashing light that drivers use to show others that they will turn their car left or right, similar to a turn signal. Don't forget to use your blinker when changing lanes. Bridge, meaning a road that is built over an obstacle. The Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco is an iconic landmark. Change lanes. 
meaning to move your vehicle into another lane. I need to change lanes to exit the highway. Driver, meaning the person who controls a car, truck, or bus. My grandfather has been a professional truck driver for over 30 years. Driver's license, meaning a plastic card with personal information and a picture of the person who has permission to drive a vehicle. Make sure to carry your driver's license whenever you're driving. Fire truck, meaning a special vehicle with equipment to stop fires. It uses flashing lights and sound to get other drivers' attention. The fire truck arrived quickly to put out the building fire. Bend, meaning a curved section of the road. Be cautious when approaching a sharp bend in the road. Breakdown, meaning when a vehicle stops working due to mechanical issues. My car had a breakdown on the highway and I had to call for assistance. Car park, parking lot, meaning an area where vehicles can be parked. I found a free spot in the shopping center car park. Car maker, meaning a company that manufactures cars. Toyota is a well-known car maker. Check, meaning to inspect or examine something e.g. tire pressure, oil level. Make sure to check your tire pressure before a long trip. Crash into, meaning when one vehicle collides with another. The driver lost control and crashed into the guardrail. Dealership, meaning a place where new and used cars are sold. I bought my car from a local Honda dealership. Dent, meaning a dent is a small hollow mark in the surface of something caused by pressure or being hit. I dropped a hammer on the floor, and it dented the floorboard. Directions. Meaning, directions are instructions that tell you what to do, how to do something, or how to get somewhere. Can you give me directions to your house? Downtown. Meaning, downtown refers to the central part of a city, usually the main business district where many shops and offices are located. I work downtown, but I live in the suburbs. Lane. Meaning, a lane is a narrow road or path, often designated for specific types of traffic. The bicycle lane runs alongside the main road. Leak. A leak is an unintended escape of liquid or gas from a container or system. There was a water leak in the basement. License plate. License plate in American English. Meaning. A license plate is a metal or plastic plate attached to a vehicle, 
displaying its registration number. The license plate on my car is ABC123. Mechanic. Meaning, a mechanic is a person who repairs and maintains machinery or vehicles. I took my car to the mechanic to fix the engine. Mileage. Meaning, mileage refers to the total distance traveled by a vehicle. My car has high mileage because I drive long distances for work. Oil. Meaning, oil is a viscous liquid used to lubricate engines and machinery. Make sure to change the oil in your car regularly. Overtake. Meaning, to overtake means to pass another vehicle while driving. I had to accelerate to overtake the slow-moving truck. Parking space. Meaning, a parking space is an area designated for parking a vehicle. I found a vacant parking space near the entrance. Ticket. Meaning, a ticket is a document that grants permission or access, such as a parking ticket or concert ticket. I received a speeding ticket for going over the limit. Tire. Meaning, a tire is a rubber covering on a wheel providing traction and supporting the vehicle. I need to replace the worn out tires on my car. Toll booth. Meaning a toll booth is a place where drivers pay a fee, toll, to use a road or bridge. We stopped at the toll booth to pay the highway fee. Windshield. Meaning, the windshield is the front window of a vehicle. A small crack appeared on my car's windshield. Twenty-nine negotiation. I've been considering my future. This means you've been thinking about your long-term goals and plans. I've been considering my future and I think I'd like to travel more. I've set my sights on transitioning. This means you've chosen a specific change you want to make, often in your career. I've set my sights on transitioning from sales to marketing. My dedication. This refers to your strong commitment and loyalty to something. My dedication to this company has always been my top priority. I'm committed to doing whatever it takes to succeed. This means you're willing to put in the effort and hard work needed to achieve your goals. I'm committed to doing whatever it takes to succeed in this new role. It would benefit the company as well. This means the proposed change would be positive for both you and the company. A flexible schedule would benefit me, but it would also benefit the company by reducing turnover.
It's a win-win situation. This means a situation where both sides get something they want. A flexible work arrangement would be a win-win situation for both of us. How do you propose balancing? This asks how someone suggests managing two things at once. How do you propose balancing a new project with my current workload? I'm willing to be flexible. This means you're open to compromise and finding a solution that works for everyone. I'm willing to be flexible with my start date if that helps with the transition. I can still fulfill my current duties. This means you can continue to do your current job responsibilities. Even with a new project, I can still fulfill my current duties without any problems. That's a fair approach. This means you think a suggestion or offer is reasonable. That's a fair approach. I can definitely work with those changes. We need to ensure. This means you need to make sure something happens. We need to ensure a smooth transition for everyone involved. I would be able to provide valuable insights. This means you have important information and knowledge to share. With my experience in marketing, I would be able to provide valuable insights for this project. I could help drive growth and competitiveness. This means you could help the company grow and be more successful. By taking on this new role, I could help drive growth and competitiveness in the market. We can delve into the specifics. This means you suggest discussing the details further That sounds interesting. We can delve into the specifics of the project at our next meeting. I'll need to assess the feasibility. This means you need to evaluate if something is practical and possible. I'll need to assess the feasibility of taking on this new responsibility alongside my current workload. I look forward to our continued discussion. This means you're interested in talking more about something in the future. I look forward to our continued discussion about this exciting opportunity. Let's reconvene soon to explore our options. This means suggesting to meet again to discuss different possibilities.
let's reconvene soon to explore our options for a flexible work arrangement. You can enhance your effectiveness. This means to improve your ability to achieve your goals or get things done. You can enhance your effectiveness in negotiations by actively listening to the other party's concerns. Aim to reach a clear agreement. This means to strive for a well-defined understanding of what each party expects from the other in the final deal. It's important to aim to reach a clear agreement on deadlines and responsibilities to avoid misunderstandings later. Knowing your alternatives empowers. This means having a backup plan or other options gives you more confidence and negotiating power. Knowing your alternatives empowers you to walk away from a deal that doesn't meet your needs. Aim to maximize value for all stakeholders involved. This means working towards a solution that benefits everyone with a vested interest in the outcome. A good negotiator aims to maximize value for all stakeholders involved, including employees, customers, and shareholders. Strive for mutually beneficial outcomes. This means to work towards an agreement that is good for both parties and satisfies their needs. When negotiating a contract, strive for mutually beneficial outcomes that ensure long-term success for everyone. To impede rational decision-making. This means to prevent people from making sound choices based on logic and reason. Unrealistic deadlines can impede rational decision-making and lead to mistakes. To hinder productive negotiations. This means to make it difficult to reach an agreement because of obstacles or problems. A lack of clear communication can hinder productive negotiations. Identify underlying interests. This means to find out what each person's true motivations and desires are beyond their initial demands. By identifying underlying interests, we can find creative solutions that satisfy everyone's needs. Increase the likelihood of reaching a mutually beneficial agreement. This means to make it more likely that both parties will find a solution that benefits them both. Open and honest communication can increase the likelihood of reaching a mutually beneficial agreement. Thoroughly research the subject matter. This means to investigate and learn everything you can about a topic before discussing it. I thoroughly researched the market trends before proposing this new marketing strategy.